God damn. Switch is about to fall asleep. Oh no, that's bad. Can't have that happening. Oops. That cannot be happening. Oh no. I gotta move everything out of my goddamn way. It's been a while. It's been a bit. Also gonna do that with my audio. That's gonna make things a little bit more bearable for me, personally. All right, let's see. Uh, audio. What, what what's happening? This is it's being captured. Okay, there we go. Oh no! Oh, where's my remote? Let the volume on TV on. That's bad. Can't do that. That's bad. Now just got to finagle with my own audio. It's really been that long, huh? <laughs> I forgot how to stream. It's okay, I'm remembering. Is there anything that I have? Is there any other audio I have running right now? Hold up. Okay, now that one's on mute. All right, cool. All right. Okay. Huh. Holy shit. All right. We're live. We're doing it. We're back. Oh my god. It's been like what two weeks since we touched the Ace Attorney Chronicles. Yikes. Fucking yikes. My schedule sucks. <laughs> been uh running around a lot. Been very busy, very busy. So I haven't really had time to to really stream. Hell, even this week I I, I um I missed the Persona stream. I felt super bad about that. I didn't want to do that. That made me feel really bad. You know what else makes me feel bad? Fucking putting Cosmo on the overlay for this game, and this motherfucker dies after the first chapter. What an asshole! For real. Come on, Cosmo. Could at least last it till like the third chapter. I worked, I worked on that. And now you being here means nothing to me. Just my failures. Alright. So. Continue. I believe where we last left off. Is that where we left off? I don't want to. I don't want them picking something that we weren't at. Yeah? Okay. Oh my god. Last time I touched this was on the six. Oh. Oh no! Oh no. Oh no, it's like... What is it, like the 27th now? The 28th? Oh god. Yikes. What date is it? Let me check. It's the 27th! It's the 27th? What the fuck? I thought it was the 28th. Okay, holy shit. I'm, I'm slowly losing my mind here. Alright, so... Where we last left off on the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. If I remember correctly. Um... So, to summarize, we're on case two. Uh, it starts with us sneaking aboard the ship on our way to England, right? So we can hang out with our pal Cosma while he's doing his attorney thing, you know, because he feels that I can be the world's most powerful attorney. I have the power within me. And then fucking he dies, a little biatch, right? It was sad, very sad. And people thought I did it, despite the fact that you know, we just got over a trial where people thought I was the killer, you know? So I had to prove my innocence. Walking around, picking up clues. We met Sherlock Holmes, or Herlock Sholmes, right? Guy is a bit of a nitwit, right? He's uh, eccentric. And, uh, you know, with his help, and mostly with my brains, we're deducing who the actual culprit is. Who killed Cosma? Was he killed? Right? So we got there. And we're like, okay, here's what happened. Cosma. Cosma saw a cat. He got scared, tripped, died, fell. The boat rocked. It was bad. Right? Why did the boat rock? Well, apparently there's a, there's another stowaway here who's not just me. But the crew's in on it too. So is she really a stowaway? Right? Finding out that she used to be part of the crew. 
and then Russia, you know, when they were stopping off at a stop, they were like, man, she's really good at ballet. Time to yoink her up and make her, you know, dance with her twinkle toes for us. Make us money, right? So then the, the ship crew stole her back. And now they're trying to get their way to England with the priceless crown so that she can live a wonderful life in the new world. So, you know, it's all an accident. A big old accident, right? Cosma died. It was sad. She tried to cover up because she was scared. But that just don't add up, okay? Couldn't have been asking it. Asking, why did I say it like that? Couldn't have been an ax Fuck, I can't even say the word. Couldn't have been an accident. There's some sort of... Some sort of malicious intent in here. We're gonna figure it out. That's where we last left off. Let's do it. So we're, we're basically at the end of case two. I want to say we're at the end of case two. It feels like it. But I remember that I had to... I had to, you know, step away because uh, at that point we've been streaming for like, what, five hours or something, six hours, something like that. And I was like, listen, I gotta go. <laughs> they just kept going and they wouldn't stop. All right. So it's time for one final logic and reasoning spectacular to expose the truth. So, Mr. Narahodo, your assistance, if you please. With what exactly, Mr. Sloams? With observation, my dear fellow. Just as I said, of these two pre- what? Previdicators? Per perverticate? Per Prevaricate? I don't fucking know. We're starting with the big words already, okay, Sloams? Calm down, my tiny feeble brain cannot comprehend this. Observations? If you remember, Mr. Narahodo, we know that somebody tried to fabricate evidence, don't we? By tampering with the scene of Mr. Asogi's death. What we're looking for is some trace of evidence that one of these two was there when it happened. Precisely. You are delightfully quick to grasp my meaning. Alright, I'll see what I can do. So we're looking for a trace of evidence that shows someone else was there last night when Cosma died. All right, trace of evidence. I'm looking at you. I'm. Oh no. Oh no. Is that ink on your back, man? Oh, look at this. Oh, some kind of stain in an unusual place. Listen, that kind of has. You know, sometimes you grow up and you get to a point in life where you start to notice some changes. Okay. Yes, you're right. It looks like ink. Either that or the man shot himself. And it came out blue for some reason. He didn't wipe properly. If I'm not mistaken. Ink. And look at the color too. It's clear where this came from. Okay. Is that the one I'm gonna... Is that what I'm pointing out? Is that the only thing there? Yes. Seaman Stroganov. You seem to have quite a large purple stain on the back of your white uniform there. Huh? Ah, uh, yes. I, uh... I don't know where the dirt come from. Oh, of course you don't. So nothing in particular comes to mind about the stain. I say particular, even though the word is peculiar. Right? I flip-flop between two. It's like data and data. And beta and bata. <laughs> That's not real. That second one wasn't real. What are you trying to say? It would appear that the significance of the stain has escaped your attention, Seaman. Allow us to make it plain. You're a fucking liar. That's how you make it plain. You point at him, you say, stop lying. It's a very large purple stain on the back of Seaman Stroganov's uniform. And I think what made it is clear. If it's so clear, then stop having a fucking, stop having a group conversation about it, you know? Indeed it is. So Mr. Narahodo, please present the evidence that proves it. My pleasure. All right then, the evidence that proves what the stain on the back of Seaman Stroganoff's uniform really is. Ha-da-da-da-da! -da -da -da. 
Wait, where is it? Is there something else besides the crime scene photo? Nail polish, right? Yeah, that's nail, um, not nail polish, what was it? Shoe polish, right? Let's see. That's entry made for his death. I'm trying to find something that's like, you know, that's just like ink bottle. But I, I guess we just, I guess we just do this, huh? Yes, it's this photograph. Look at this photograph. And the ink it shows. That's the cause of the stain on your uniform. Ink. Yeah, it's like a skid. Skid? A skid? What the hell? I was going to say squid, but I said it came out of skid. Oh, man. I lost all ability to speak. A rather, a rather unusual color of ink. Purple. <gasps> oh, no. That's bad. Ah, the painting drops at last. Now you see the significance. The Russian word on the floor next to the victim's body was written in purple ink, as you can see by this colorless photo. And the stain on the back of your uniform is ink of exactly the same color. Or color, as it as it spelled out. Yeah, that's right, they put a U in it. Fucking assholes. Only, only assholes do that. Yeah, that's right, England, I'm coming after you. You're gonna have to fight me. <laughs> If the ink had been dried, it could have possibly have stained your uniform in that way. Which means... You're a dirty little boy. You must have been present in the cabin in the moments immediately after the ink was spilled. Alright, yes. It was me. I did it. Everything. <gasps> but why? I arranged everything and dead students kept... I arranged everything in dead students cabin <laughs> to make it look like wardrobe man did it. Now why you gotta be like that, man? Then I pressed the button to make Bira, Bira, that's how you say that, right? Do emergency stop and bolt cabin door shut. I did everything so no one would suspect our angel. Biff, please, Biff. Is his name Biff? Oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 that's his first name. Fuck, I forgot, yeah. His name is Biff Stroganoff. Because he's a beefy man. Don't worry, Angel. Let me do the talking. It was after one in the morning, I was on duty, patrolling passageway. Then our Angel came to me. She was white like sheet. She was white like sheet, yes. Biff, please, you must help me. Ah, oh, shit. I went with her. The door to cabin number one was open. When I looked inside, I saw a student boy on the floor. What happened here? Please, don't tell anyone. Poggy Woggies, hey what's up, ethanol? <laughs> it's been a bit. My little one, my little furry friend. It murdered a guy. Your cat murdered my friend. Fuck your fur. I'll kick that cat. I'll throw that fucker out the window. How dare you? Everything that happened in the cabin is like Angel told you. The kitten escaped through the ventilator into Mr. Asogi's cabin. Then he tripped over it and broke his neck when he fell on the floor. Maybe fucking... Maybe, you know, Cosmo should have done some neck workouts. Shouldn't be having a weak neck. Can't head to the new world with a weak neck. Put some dumbbells on your shoulder. Start... Start doing some. <laughs> start doing some. I don't fucking know. Oh, you killed my friend with your cat. Your cat killed my friend. I'll kill that little fucker. <laughs> yes, that's right. So after the incident, when the cat ran away, Miss po Miss Pavlova then visit the cabin next to hers, only to find its occupants lying lifeless on the floor. Sad. Very sad. She said she was worried when she heard sound of something falling on the floor. That's when she went to look. No, Angel? The door was not locked. So she opened to look, and you already know what happened after. No. There's just one thing, if you wouldn't mind. What? When you went to Mr. Sogi's cabin, Miss Pavlova... 
Was he already dead? Why? I already told you. <laughs> Maybe he was on the floor and he's like, help, call a doctor. And she said, shh, quiet. Just <laughs> twisted his neck. That'd be fucked up. We need an open door of student's cabin and lock. I was asking Ms. Pavlova. Oh, shit. Was he dead? Well, Ms. Pavlova? Was he gasping for air? Did you not get help? Duh. Why'd you hesitate? Oh. A mental boom last night. Even remember why. What? What do you mean by that? Explain. Yes, that is right. I saw him. It was dark. And he was wearing black, but... He was on the floor. Not moving. I was scared. I understand. It was just a bad night. Oh, yeah. It was a cold night for me last night. I had to go to work. It was very cold. It was a bad night, but you don't remember why. Ooh. That's not good. <laughs> Can't be having that. So, is that finally it now? Have we discovered the real truth about Cosmo's death at last? Ah, something very nearly slipped my mind. Oh, Mr. Slums. This photograph. Yes, I took this myself, you know. Yes, you took a photograph. The cause of death was broken neck, therefore the victim died instantaneously. In the unfortunate incident that pre that precipitated these events, a kitten on which the victim stumbled. However, if those are the facts, there is one peculiar area in this photograph. Hmm. It's been it's been two weeks since I streamed this, so so I lost every every bit of like theory crafting shit I had in my mind is gone. Right. All I remember is that I was like, a snake did it. And then they're like, a snake's here. And they're like, oh, but the snake didn't do it. And I was like, damn it. Because I was really hoping on that snake. Uh, you got to go to work now? Okay. Take it easy. You know? Listen, pretend to work hard. Have those fuckers pay you money. Okay? Don't work too hard. Fuck those guys. Unless, unless you know, you're doing something that, that you know, requires hard work so that other people don't get hurt like plane maintenance or something like that don't don't skip on that one don't do that that's bad that's how you get people killed you won't get people killed now do you but yeah take care thanks for stopping by however these are the facts there is one peculiar area in this photograph that seems to me somewhat unnatural is it actually plane maintenance okay well don't sleep on that <laughs> please don't sleep on that you have Lives in your hands. Fucking, you know? Don't sleep on that. Make sure you do everything natural. And then when your superior is like, eh, whatever, whatever the fuck, you go, uh-uh, not whatever the fuck. People get on these planes, man. It's already scary getting on that damn plane. Put the fuel in the plane. All right, make sure you put enough not to weigh it, not to make it weigh too much. Make sure you put enough not to make it weigh too little. Get enough to get to your destination. What do you mean unnatural? Do everything by the book. What are your thoughts on the matter, Mr. Narhoda? Hmm. Oh, well. If Cosmo tripped and fell and by some terrible stroke of bad luck broke his neck, which part of this photograph print seems unnatural? His neck? I don't fucking know. Hmm. Oh my god, I got three little health pips. I mean, doesn't seem to be any like, any like, you know, signs on his neck, I would say, but he is wearing a collar, so maybe. Huh, which part of this is unnatural? Well, are we talking about the the words yes. the words in Russian clearly weren't written by Cosmo yeah I mean we've been through this 
So if you're looking for something unnatural, that's the obvious point. Very true. We've been through this, guys. I mean, that would explain why he has ink on it. Wait, that wouldn't really explain why he has ink on his back. Hmm. That wouldn't explain why he has ink on his back. What? Unless, you know, he backed up into the counter or something. Very true. It's certainly, or either that, or he was there when the ink spilled and it splashed on him. Oh. Now we're getting to the meat and potatoes of this. Very true. It is certainly peculiar. But it's not what I meant by unnatural, I'm afraid. The peculiarity crass, uh, crass, 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 detail was orchestrated by the culprit. I mean to identify another point. Oh, I see. What do you see, Mikotoba? Imagine if you will lose your footing as yourself. In my opinion, if you landed as the victim appeared to have done here, it would be most unnatural. Oh, so he would have landed on his back, are you saying? Hmm. I mean, if he didn't see the cat, he still could have landed on his front. But let's go with this. Maybe he did notice the cat. I'm sure you'll reach the same conclusion. How thoughtful of you, Mr. Sloams. Thank you for your gentle guidance. If Cosma tripped and fell, and by some terrible stroke of bad luck broke his neck, which part of the photograph print seems unnatural? Well, his positioning, then. He land forward. I mean, how do I point that out? Is it just... Yes. Do I just do that? Must be here, surely. Allow me to offer you a piece of advice regarding the pursuit of detection. Okay, fuck you. Keep your eyes open. And it can be equally helpful to use them. Yeah, okay, whatever, asshole. Hey, he was playing what Mr. Sloan means by unnatural, isn't it? The word written in foreign language underneath his fingernails, surely. That peculiarly... Okay, wait, what? Wait. Would you land as the victim has? What of your hands? Look like the sort of fellow who stumbled with one regular... Uh, who stumbles regularly. This should be an easy task. I mean, Cosmo tripped and fell. Broke his neck. I mean, didn't we already go through the fact that, uh... That, you know, that was... That this was plagiarized? Didn't we talk about this already? Or are you talking about how his hands are closed? Yes! Alright. If he's really fell due to an unfortunate accident, then this fist just doesn't seem quite right. The exact same thought occurred to me. I mean, I get where you're going at, right? If you fell by accident, your palms would be open. You'd be like, whoa, shit. And then, you, you know, you kill yourself. <laughs> you die. In a fall, one's instinct is to open the palms flat. Yet, here we see the victim with his left hand tightly balled into a fist. Almost, you might say. As though he were grasping something. Even though the word was gripping, I chose grasping. You can't tell me what to do. What do you mean? Simply that I took the liberty to snatch what was in his hand. I'm investigating the victim's fist a short while ago. You did? And what prey did you imagine I found there, my dear fellow? Mr. Sloams, show us, please. Why, of course, my dear madam. Would I keep you in suspense? I mean, you've been doing that thus far, so yes. That's exactly what you're doing. This is what I found. Oh no. Oh no. He yoinked your earring. A crescent moon with a little gemstone in the middle. Yes, you're right. A crescent moon. It's very pretty. But what does it tell us? It means he got a little bit of fisticuffs. And he said... Before I die, I'm gonna snatch this. You gotta be real. You gotta have some real sleight of hand to yank someone's earring off their ear. Hmm. It tells us nothing. 
I'm not so sure about that one. It looks familiar somehow. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. Observation, Mr. Narahodo. That is the key. What? The truth is now tantalizingly close. How did the crescent moon come to be in Cosmo's clenched fist? This is the final clue, the last piece of the puzzle. Ask yourself, what does this little crescent moon mean? What significance does it have? And observe, find the answer with your own eyes. Oh no. Oh no, girl. Oh no. Oh no, that's bad. Bad. Yes. It's bad for you. Miss Pavlova, I noticed that on your ear. Even though you have a metal earring, the decorative part seems to be missing. The little link holding it must have broken, I suppose. What? But looking at your other ear... I noticed a crescent moon. Listen, Miss Palova, I didn't want you to be a little murderer, but you're a little murderer. On top of that, what kind of a idiot still wears the other earring why would you come on man the moment you noticed you would have been oh no i gotta get rid of this shit <sighs> i don't believe it you murdered that guy now the missing crescent moon was found in the victim's clinch fist clearly there is only one logical conclusion wouldn't you agree mr narahodo yes Miss Pavlova. Mr. Sogi must have grasped the crescent moon and pulled it from your ear. See, that time the word was grasped, not gripped. I chose it right this time. Perhaps just moments before, he fell to the floor. In other words, last night, in Mr. Sogi's cabin, you witnessed the moment when the victim fell with your own eyes. In fact, you were quite literally at arm's length from him. But then the question is, why did Mr. Sogi do that? Why did he pull your earring from your ear and hold it in his clenched fist during the final moments? Oh no. Angel? No one can protect you now. Please, Miss Pavlova, tell us the truth. Last night. What did you do to Kazuma? You killed my friend! He didn't even get to survive the second. We didn't even get to see his final moments. When I think about everything that happened yesterday, it was too much. Running away, the fishing boat in the middle of the night, trying to climb onto this huge ship. And then, when I was at last in this cabin, and I could relax after this horrible long day. Darka! Wait! I couldn't believe it when she disappeared through the, through the ventilator. I tried to call her with a little whistle. I tried waving her favorite toy. But nothing worked. Darker would not come back. What are you doing here at this time of night, Inspector? Oh. I'm sorry. I thought it was a friend of mine. The young man from your country. He was very polite and kind. He helped me find Darka, and he promised not to tell anyone. But then, when I had my friend in my arms again, and I was going to leave the man's cabin. Just a moment. Sorry, but... Oh, yes? I'm sure I know your face. I've seen you somewhere before. Oh, of course. 
You're Nikola Pavlova, aren't you? The Russian ballerina. N no I don't know that name. My heart nearly stopped when he said that. He knew who I was. How could this man from land far away east... Wait, what? Oh, in the land far away east. Not from the land. In the land far away east, know a Russian ballerina. Yes, I saw your performance in Japan. The beautiful... The beautiful? The beauty of the ballet made a deep impression on me. But, what are you doing on the ship? I'm sure I read that your ballet company was performing in Shanghai at the moment. I can't fool him. I have to tell him the truth, and hope he doesn't tell anyone. I have no other choice. Hmm, I see. So if you ran away... Please keep my secret. Don't tell anyone. Give me a moment. I could use another option here. Option? I use another opinion here. He's gonna pull the cord. He's gonna tell the captain. Why did I think I could trust him? Then it happened. Everything at once. It was only a second, but it felt like forever. Wait! I shouted, and then... Darko jumped out of my arms and down the young man's feet. And... As he turned around to look at me. I pushed him. I don't even know why. I don't know why I did it. I was just so scared. And... I had to stop him from telling anyone about me. And that's when you went to fetch help. From Seaman Stroganov, who was on duty out in the passageway. I heard Nina cry out. A thud on the floor, so I ran to her. She was standing at cabin door, shaking like leaf. She looked at me and said, Help me, Biff. If they find out, I will be... Please, I have nowhere to go. So you decided to help. And that's when you arranged things in Cosmo's cabin to make it look like I did it. So that no one would suspect the passenger in the cabin next door. Yes. I went into cabin and looked around to make sure there was nothing to show Nina was there. And then I found Stowaway, in wardrobe, still sleeping. Right, and that's when he found me. So you worked out a plan, to lay the blame on the Stowaway. I closed wardrobe doors, and, and put back strange paper sign. Luckily for me, that's the only reason Mikotoba started to believe me when I said, what? I couldn't even speak for him. God damn it, what happened to me? <laughs> when I said uh, I was innocent, shit. I dragged young man's body to good place and used ink that was spilling to write on floor. I wrote, I, I don't even fucking know what that means. A oh, wardrobe, okay, cool. So the person would find him, look inside the wardrobe and find Stowaway. And tell me, what of the glass bell? It was by my feet, so I picked it up. I see. But it was dark in the cabin. I didn't notice the other half. Then Angel went back to her cabin, and I finished job. By pressing the emergency alarm button in the passageway. Yes. Accordingly, the SS Bureau did indeed, did indeed come to an emergency halt, a little after 2 a.m. Thus enticing the bolt on the cabin door to slide shut, creating the locked room mystery. There's still one thing I don't understand, Miss Pavlova. What? Well, you said that you told Cosmo about the fact that you ran away from your homeland. 
and it's because you were worried he was going to tell the captain that you pushed him. Wasn't the captain in on this, though? <laughs> Isn't that right? Yeah? But even if he pulled the bell cord and called for the cab captain of the ship, aren't you friends with every member of this crew? Why would that have been a problem? Oh, you just couldn't help yourself from murder, huh? It was what he said first that made me scared. What he said first? What are you doing here at a time at this time of night, Inspector? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a friend of mine. He said an inspector was his friend. Yes, meaning me. Who was supposed to be acting as his bodyguard. I thought that if police knew about me, they would arrest me. So before he could pull the bell cord, I... May I stop you in a moment, please, Miss Pavlova? Mikoroba's not having none of this shit. Hi, Miss Vander. How's it going? Hope you're having a lovely time. Hope you had a lovely day. Or a lovely evening. Or you're going to have a lovely day. It just doesn't seem to make sense. I mean, was Mr. Isogi really going to pull the bell cord? I don't know. Well, he was definitely going to talk to me. But, I mean, no one knew I was in the cabin at that time, so... You know? <laughs> Dead boy is best case. I beg to differ. After playing. I don't know, I'm, in my mind, I'm still... I'm looking at Phoenix Wright 1 and Phoenix Wright 3. And I'm, I'm taking the fourth case and the last case. I'm still battling those in my mind as to which case is the best in the uh, Ace Attorney series. Because those two are pretty fucking good. Feelings were had. What do you think, Mr. Naruto? Hmm, I think she's a little murder. Little murderer. She couldn't quench her thirst for blood. She needed it. 3-5 is all favorite kit. Oh, yeah. So good. So good. It's <laughs> so good. Like, I, I literally just, uh, I want to say a week ago, I talked to someone about it, right? Where they're like, man, there's some fucked up people in that game. And I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> such a, such a good villain. Such a good villain. To the point where if you just utter that name and entices some emotions in me, you know, I'm like, oh, fuck that person. Well, I'm not Cosmo, so I can't know for certain, but... And yet you love every single one of them. Oh, yeah, definitely. You hate to love him. But you love him, you know? He was a man of, this, of his word. If he told you he wouldn't give your secret away, he wouldn't have done it. No. He was walking over to it. He was gonna pull the cord. He was gonna make them send me back. Well, Mr. Nadahoda... The day's work is not yet done, it seems. There's one more deduction to make. What? Another deduction? This distrusting murdering bitch. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Troubles and tribulations is God tier. It is. I love it. But I heard, I heard, um, I think it's, oh, thank you for the follow. Um, I heard someone say, uh, what the fuck? What What is it called? One of the 3DS ones. What is it, like, Spirit something? I, I can't remember. I haven't, you know, one of these days I'm gonna play that, right? I haven't yet. But I heard someone say that that has, like, the best case out of all the games. Right? And they were, like, even even counting, uh, 3-5? Oh, Spirits of Justice and Dual Destiny. They don't care about Dual Destinies or Spiritual Justice? Okay, I haven't played them, so I don't know. At some point, I'm going to play them, you know? Right now on the channel, we're going through this, and we're going through Persona 4 Golden, right? But, uh, you know, when we get to that, I'll be, you know, I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> yes, what action was the victim really about to take at that moment? He was going to talk to me, another stowaway. 
Can we determine whether this young man's gaze was directed? Wait, what? Whether? I meant where. Yeah, we can. First, consider the victim's location within his cabin. That's easy. I remember every detail. Uh, I can't even speak. I remember every detail of that room. I mean, yes, I spent quite a lot of time in the wardrobe, but still. That cabin has been my home for these, for, the, for these, for this entire voyage. But you're not missing much if you don't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I know I'm not missing. Well. Because I, I believe at that point, Phoenix's story is kind of over, right? He takes like, uh, he like steps to the side or something. I don't know, probably a bias. Yeah, it is, right? And from what I know, you know, Apollo takes over. But who knows? Maybe like, maybe, maybe I can view it like how I view, uh, how I view like some Final Fantasies or like Persona where like, where you're like fucking, all right, our group before is done. Now it's time for the new group to make their story, right? And even though at first you're like, man, you're not as good as the old people, you know, you grow on them, right? They grow on you. And you go, oh. Uh, story's over, but he doesn't step aside. Well, I mean, I mean, not not step aside as in like, as in like dis disappear. Step aside as in like becomes more of a supporting role rather than the main guy, right? Uh, that's what they should have done. There's a few decent cases though. Okay. I heard, I heard there was, I heard there was one case that was like really bad though, that no one liked, <laughs> that everyone hated, so uh, I don't know, I don't know, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens when we get there, right? So this is how the cabin looked last night, when Ms. Pavlova visited Cosmo Summer. Yes, and exactly how it was. Are you ready then, Mr. Narahodo? Yes. If there's one thing I've learned today... It's that a simple gaze can reveal all manners of the truth. Not only that, in order to draw the right conclusion, you can't afford to be out by ever, wait, what? You can't afford to be out by even a little bit when you're following the gaze of where it lands. I'm sorry, what? Did I have a stroke reading that? <laughs> so, when he turned away from Ms. Pavlova, what exactly was Cosmo looking at? My man was looking at me. He's like, I need my friend. Considering everything that had happened last night, certainly it may have looked as though Cosmo was going to ring the bell cord. Yes, however. What is directly beside the bell cord, the, ro the wardrobe. The wardrobe and more importantly what was inside the wardrobe his little Jiminy Cricket I'm his little Jiminy Cricket on the shoulder I'm like well I'm not sure well she did steal that crown maybe we should snitch on her <laughs> she looks she looks murderous to me I don't trust her fucking Jiminy Cricket god damn it the man's great friend sleeping soundly oh Miss Pavlova Please, think back very carefully. What were Mr. Osogi's actual exact words last night? Give me a moment. I can use another opinion here. Another opinion. Yes, but not from a member of the crew. No. Mr. Osogi intended to console his close friend on the matter, which means he fucking trusted you to keep his secret. To see if, between them, they might be able to help in some way, no doubt. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no, I murdered a guy. <laughs> She's only 15. The internet's going down. Hoping you can catch me next time you're playing. Okay. Uh, it's on, um, it's on the Twitch schedule, but, you know, my, my schedule's a little iffy, right? So. <laughs> so, you know. I'm gonna try and make an effort, uh... To put out notices when I stream. I'm doing that through Twitter and uh, my YouTube community page. So, there's that. But thank you for stopping by if you're heading out. Sadly, we can't know the truth for certain now. It's too late for that. But I wish you had made sure of what Mr. Sogi was looking at. 
things may have ended very differently if you had. All right, but, uh, okay, cool, it's nice, right? And Miss Pavlova, listen, you're very adorable, but you still murdered a guy. Miss Pavlova? I want to thank you for finally admitting the truth. But unfortunately, you did kill a guy. The truth is, a man lost his life because of what you did. And that will never change. I hope you'll never forget that. I'm sorry. Really? I'm so, so sorry. What have I done? And so, at long last, the mystery surrounding the tragic accident on the SS Bureau was finally laid to rest. Whether she got locked up or not, we don't know. I mean, listen, my heart's a little broken too, right? Because, you know, after, listen, after, after trials and tribulations, I can't look at cute girls no more the same way, you know? I'm like, listen, you got a cute face, but some evil can be hidden behind there. I can't, I can't trust no more. She stole my trust. She ruined, she ruined my fucking, my spirit. She destroyed my ability to love. What will happen to Miss Pavlova now then? Once we reach, uh, rich? Wow. Once we reach Great Britain, she'll be handed over to the British police at Scotland Yard. Okay, so she is getting handed over. We're not having a fucking misdemeanor like the other case. Jesus fuck. What about the fact that she ran away from Russia? Uh, won't the Russians try to re uh, re repent? What the fuck? Re retra I don't even fucking know that word. I'm sorry. <laughs> will they try and get her back? Apparently, the English detective can speak to the immigration office and uh, and sort it all out. Mr. Sloan's can do that? Oh, so he's gonna, listen, he's gonna be like, listen. Listen. She's done a bad thing, right? So we're just gonna keep this a little secret, alright? She's not here in, she's not here in England. Alright? So she won't be going back to Russia then? No, I don't think so. Even if she wanted to return in the future, I doubt she'd be able to. She ran away, so now she's in exile for life. I see. I'm sorry. See, Miss Stroganov. We should have handed your ass over to the police, too. You fucking helped out, ma'am. I wanted to help our angel no matter what. But I didn't think about you, about how you lost a good friend. I will go with Nina. I will give myself to- Oh, okay, now I don't want you to go. That's kind of you. In the meantime, thank you for letting me go free again. Kazuma's death feels like such a waste, but... I mean, listen, you wanna know what was a waste? Putting him in this fucking overlay. Well, do what you can for Miss Pavlova, won't you? Da. Well, I'm afraid you need to pack now. We're due to arrive in Hong Kong tomorrow, as much as it pains me. I'm gonna have to hand you over to the council to arrange your passage back to Japan. Masonica, I will kick your ass. Don't you, don't you fucking test me. Yes, I did stow away after all. You couldn't really expect any different. So, you should get back to your cabin now. God damn it. Mikotoba, pull some strings, damn it. It looks like my study tour to Great Britain is over before it even began, then. To think that only days ago, Kazuma and I were laughing together about how we tear up the streets of London. That seems like a distant memory now. Oh, what's that? Is it someone weeping? 
Well, yeah, it's someone we... It's probably me, Kotoba. When the fuck you get in here? Mikotoba, put the sword down. Cesaro san. Narohoro, I didn't know you had returned. Oh, well, I haven't been back long. Inspector Hosonika just told me I should pack, you know, ready to leave the ship tomorrow and all that. Aww. You're gonna make me cry, damn it! Still can't believe this happened. I can't believe someone's life can be over. Just like that. Susano san. He had such grand ideas for the visit to Great Britain. So many dreams. And now they've been cruelly taken away, just as he has. I thought I could never forgive the person responsible. But now, now we know the truth. That it was just an accident. I don't know, pushing someone don't seem like an accident. I'm just saying, that was intent. Just a silly series of mishaps. Mishap my ass! It's too much, Narahora-san. It's just too much. Yes, I know. I wish there was something I could say. Who's that, Shlomes? Is that you? Oh no, it's Ho Fuck you, Hasanaga. You're sending me back to Japan, asshole. Inspector. My duty was to see Asogi safe to Great Britain. Yeah, and you failed. But I failed. Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> Such an asshole. And caused his two closest friends great pain and suffering as a result. I've let everyone down. And I will do anything to make up for my terrible blunder. Well, don't fucking snatch on me, okay? Nobody blames you, Inspector. What the fuck? Now I'm free again now. Huh? <laughs> Surprise, Mr. Narahoda. What the fuck, man? Wait, what's the meaning of this? Oh, a trifling matter. Simply that, in my head, I think I shall always picture you wearing those shackles. Without them, the balance seems all wrong. It's distracting. Sorry? So I decided to restore them, for all time's sake. Shall we say, you are a starway after all. A fucking asshole. He thinks this is funny. Mr. Slums? We do appreciate all your assistance. I'd like to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Not at all. Not at all. And though it's a little late, may I offer my sincere condolences. The loss of your companion is truly heart heart-rending? What? Heart-rendering. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I read, I read it wrong. I hope that you'll be able to fulfill some of his aspirations in his honor. I'm afraid that won't be possible. We shall be disembarking- uh, Fuck, I can't even read. Damn it, what's wrong with me? We shall be disembarking at the next port in Hong Kong. We have to return to Japan and make a full report about everything that's happened. What? Wait a minute. It's just me that has to go back, isn't it? I mean, I was the stowaway. Well, I mean, without Cosmo, there's really no reason for Mikotoba to go there, or Hosonaga. Hosonaga, my bad, not Hisonaga. The terms of the study tour were negotiated by the Department of Justice in both Great Britain and Japan. It was to be one lawyer and one assistant. Was to be... In the light of Mr. Sogi's unfortunate death, I'm afraid the study tour can no longer be, uh, can no longer go ahead. Oh no. I don't care for me, but... Poor Sasato-san. My dear fellows, the majority of problems have 
I have an extremely simple solution, you know. All you require is one lawyer. And study tour can continue, surely. Yeah, but I thought... That, that wouldn't work, would it? I mean, we, uh... You know, they carefully chose... They carefully chose Cosma over me, right? I mean, I wasn't even in the running, so you can't just replace me, can you? I mean, replace him. Oh, if you missed it, next time again. Jesus. Uh, hi, Serena. Qualifications, you say? Any qualifications obtained in your own country will be of little value in Great Britain, I'm afraid. Oh, but... But anyways, the voyage to London still promises a good month of time. Ample opportunity, I would say, to find yourselves another suitable lawyer. Yes. Um, Miss Cesaro? Yes? Do you think perhaps I might be able to do it? But you're not a lawyer, Mr. Naruto, though. I went to the same school. Oh, unless. Are you studying law? No, I'm not, but... I'm sorry. In that case, I don't think there's even a chance it could work. But as I said, there's still more than a month before we reach England's shores. Isn't that right, Mr. Narahodo? Yes. I have a month in which to study, to learn what I must to become a lawyer in Great Britain. Mr. Narahodo. That's ridiculous. You're seriously suggesting anybody could learn all that in just 40 days? Listen, it'll really... S Listen. I'm gonna shock you guys right now. All that crazy bachelor's degree shit you do to become a lawyer in the U.S.? They're all just formalities. You can become a lawyer really fucking quick if you really wanted to, okay? That's all I'm saying. I mean, in the laws of the U.S., you can defend yourself in court if you want to, okay? I'm just saying, all right? You don't need a fancy fucking degree, all right? You know? I'm just saying, okay? There's only one way to find out. I will work my fingers to the bone, Inspector. Every single day. Will you let me try? And if by the time we reach Great Britain, I haven't learned enough to be recognized as a lawyer, I'll take whatever punishment is deemed appropriate. But, why put yourself in such a difficult position? For Kazuma. He said that there was something he had to do in Great Britain, and that he would sacrifice anything to make it happen. He was passionate about it. I can't tell all the passion just... Uh, wait, what? I can't let all that passion just come to nothing. And anyways, it's for my own benefit too. I will become a lawyer. I have to. What do you say, Mrs. Sato? I think it's a wonderful idea. Thank you. So, what does our uh, bespeckled inspector friend says? Are you serious? One lawyer and one assistant. The numbers are indisputable. No, it's madness. Yes, fascinating, wouldn't you agree? Fascinating. Duties and rules are the dull routine of existence that we all abhor. Fuck. That word. Abhor. Given us. Given a fuck. Give us interest. Give us fat. Damn it. Fascification. Uh, fat fascination. Fuck. Can't read. What's wrong with me? Speak for yourself. Besides, qualifications are no measure of a man. What matters is his character. No? Have you witnessed Apple? I love how Shlomes is like, qualifications doesn't matter. All that matters is his characters as he constantly gets things wrong. <laughs> Asshole. 
<laughs> was like, come on, dude, you're taking advice from that guy? I mean, he did help us, let's be honest. He helped us off of a hunch. But he still got the rest of the fucking details wrong. Have you witnessed ample evidence of this man's exemplary character today with your own eyes? From the early hours of this morning until its very moments now. Despite contenting with the passing of his close companion, and despite the accusations of guilt, this man has shown resourcefulness, intelligence, and above all, courage. Very well. I think of a clever way to word my report to the Department of Justice. Inspector! Oh, Inspector! After all, I did just make a promise, didn't I? I said that I'd do anything at all to make up for my shortcomings here. Oh, thank you, Inspector. If you'll excuse me, I must pay a visit to the captain's quarters, I think. I need to discuss what to do next and how best to make my report. Are you really prepared to attempt this, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, I'm going to try. I wonder, would you consider teaching me what I need to know? Or you think about being a lawyer? I would be delighted to help you. I am a judicial... Judici fuck, that's a word. I am a judicial assistant, after all. Thank you. I always have a hard time saying that word. But somehow it just came out there. Like a nice... Like a nice hot knife going into butter. And Mr. Narahodo. Yes. I'd like you to take charge of this. What? Me? Are you sure? I'm sure it's what Cosmo Sama would have wanted. Its name is Kurama. It's a great sword that's been in Asogi clan for generations. There's an obvious Naruto joke that I can make there, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna refrain. Cause Naruto is garbage! Yeah, that's right, I said it. Very well, I accept. I'll treasure it always. So then, Mr. Sato, it seems we'll be working together from time to time. It'll be an honor, Mr. Naruto. Even that goddamn book. And for the next 40 days, I shan't grant you a single minute of freedom. Hey, okay, I'm, I'm okay with that. Wait a minute, can I be okay with that? Hold up. Hold up. Let's see. Damn it! No, I'm not okay with that. I need an adult present at all times. We shall fill every spare moment with study. Yes, that's exactly what I need. But, before we begin, I have an earnest favor to ask of you. Goodness, what is it? Please throw me to the ground. I need an adult. I need an adult. Oh, God. Three times? What? Oh, no. I should never have doubted you. She's like... <laughs> Mr. Narahodo, I need you to do something for me. What's that? Throw me to the ground. Three times. <laughs> like, what? I can't. I'll get arrested. That's the first thing they teach you in law school. <laughs> never, never go for temptation. You were Cosmo Sama's closest friend. Of course, you wouldn't have done anything to hurt him. That shouldn't have been obvious. That should have been obvious from the start. But I allowed suspicion to get the better of me. And no matter how upset I was feeling, it was completely unforgivable behavior. I, I don't know, I had a stroke because I saw the word behavior, and I'm like, is that how you spell that? <laughs> no, you were in shock. You just found out about me stowing away, and the cabin door was locked from the inside. No, I won't let you make excuses for me. 
Whatever the circumstances, I should never have thrown you. Not just once, but five times. Wait, so why am I doing three? <laughs> that number keeps creeping up, doesn't it? Please, you must. Just take a hold of me and throw me. Do it. Oh, God. Don't even think about it. No. <clears throat> no. No. This is the first step of, of being a lawyer. No, no, I don't know how. I've never thrown anyone in my life. Very wise, Mr. Norohodo. It isn't a skill one acquires without considerable training. Oh, Mr. Sloams, you were watching, you fucking creep? I observed your throwing technique several times with great interest, I confess. I was most impressed. When did he see that? I presume that it would be a form of Japanese wrestling. Oh, well, in a way. It's not wrestling, but my own interpretation of an ancient jiu-jitsu technique. Apparently it's called the Susato Takedown. It leaves your head swimming. Believe me. Hmm. How... Begullion? The fuck was that word? I'm a practitioner of combatant arts myself. I am somewhat accomplished boxer. There he goes, dancing around again. I wonder if you'd be so kind to instruct me on the techniques of your res- of your- what? Of your, uh, asserting throw. I couldn't even speak, damn it. <laughs> yes, I'd be honored. Then let us not dally. Demonstrate, my dear madam. Oh, of course. No! Get away from me! Are you ready, Mr. Nanahodo? Sorry? Damn it! Demonstrate on him, not me! As you can see, you throw, you throw from the uh, from the abdomen. Ah, yes. Asserting indeed. And that is what, that is what you term the Sasato takedown, is it? Actually, no. That was a Sasato squash. Assholes. Can you not see that I'm losing conscious? In my grogging state of consciousness. Grogging? Grogging. The scene from an evening recent spent with Cosmo flickered into my mind. Kurama. That's a long ass sword. That's right. It's a prized sword that's been passed down throughout generations of Asogi clan. And I guess that generation came to an end, huh? That clone is the clone? That clan is no more. <laughs> I can't believe you managed to get permission to bring it with you. I mean, taking Katana on study tour is more than a little irregular, surely. The Japanese man's sword is his soul, Ryunosuke. I can't be parted from my Katana. Kurama guides me. I truly believe that. So, its name com compels its wielder to slice evil in two. Not that you would need much compelling. On that subject, there's something very important that I have to do in Great Britain. And I'll sacrifice anything to make it happen. I'd appreciate you seeing it through with me. Huh? Of course I will. Whatever it is, I'll see it through to the end with you. I knew you wouldn't let me down. That important thing he had to do? I still don't know what it was. But I'm gonna see the place for myself and work it out. In Great Britain's capital, London. And there you have it. Okay. End of chapter two. Crash course candidate. Would you like to save your progress? Of course. Why, of course I would. All right. Episode three. The Adventure of the Runaway Room. Oh, shit.
So I guess this is going to be happening in Shanghai? Glancing over my records of the late last century, I am faced by the events of a certain bitter winter. A murder in a carriage as it sped through dense London fog in the dead of night. Though the victim and the perpetrator were the only ones inside, there were multiple witnesses to the crime itself. However, none could have imagined at the time that such a seemingly obvious case as this would end in such a horrendous manner. My friend, Mr. Herlock Jones, once said of the incident, I believe that perhaps that case was indeed the prelude. The beginning of a long concerto that impressive Japanese student and I were to play together. Amazing. Is, is this really just a railway station? Railway station or not, I've never seen such an enormous building before. <laughs> and look at all the steam locomotives. This country is incredible. Dreaming. So this is the capital of Great Britain. So, where to? Oh, hello. Climb aboard. I'll take you wherever you want to go. <laughs> In that case, um, the Supreme Court in Whitehall, if you wouldn't mind. My pleasure. I suppose you're uh, visiting students from abroad, eh? <laughs> yes. Thought so. Well then, I hope you enjoy your stay. And welcome to the center of the world, Great Britain's mighty capital, London. I need to wonder where the fuck those uh two <laughs> those two little boys came from, you know? It was like they kind of showed up, put our uh Put our stuff in the carriage, and then we just we just fucked off. Really, to be honest, kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Do they get paid? Probably not. Probably not. All right, let me just just want to mess with the uh, with the audio a little bit. There we go. I increased it a little bit. I thought it was a little low. All right, February the eighteenth of February. 921. I didn't expect Narahodo and uh, Cesaro to have such posh accents, you know? I expected some old timiness going on, but, you know, not not as posh. Right? I expected everyone else to be more posh. What an incredible place. Fucking look at all this clockwork shit. It's so imposing. Is it almost. It's almost suffocating. This place is breathtaking. It looks like a fortress. There's some stone buildings like this in Japan now, of course. But they've only built it in a few short decades since we opened our borders to the outside world. An authentic example like this has quite a different impact. Wouldn't you agree? Far cry from the wood and paper most of our buildings are constructed from. It's certainly unfamiliar. But I think there's more to the difference than just construction materials. What is this place again? This is Lord Chief Justice Office. What? Lord Chief Justice's Office. Is his name Justice? <laughs> or is his name just Ice? Ha 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 ha. That's a little zero escape humor for you. Naruto-san, in Supreme Court of Great... Wait, what? Oh, sorry. 
that was a part of a different sentence. In the Supreme Court of Great Britain, the Lord Chief Justice. We had instructions to report here at this time. If circumstances were different, we were supposed to let the Lord Chief Justice know that we have arrived from Japan. But Kazuma can't. No. So instead, we are here in different capacity. As envoys to report the news of Kazuma Sama's death. Yes. And having delivered his or her message, an envoy's duty is done. So we had to return to Japan. If you want to remain here in Great Britain, I have to take Cosmo's place as law student selected for the study tour. Yes, which means you need relinquished qualification. Wait, what? Did I say relinquish? My bad. Uh, re resquisite. Fuck. The resquisite qualifications as a lawyer. Which is what I've been studying for. Here in Great Britain, it is the Lord Chief Justice who appoints lawyers. So, that's the second reason why we're here. To have you officially recognized as a lawyer. It's the only way that we'll be able to remain here in London. I hope I'm up to the scratch. Ah, uh, good morning. Sorry for keeping you. Oh my fucking god, you're intimidating. Jesus. I trust you aren't too exhausted after your long voyage from Japan. Hmm. It seems I'm 1 hour 12 minutes and 47 seconds late. My apologies. Oh, no, no, don't mention it. We're never happier than when we're standing around with nothing much to do. How fortunate. So, introductions. I am Male Strongheart. Okay. I'm trying to see what the joke is with that, but I, I, I don't know. Lord Chief Justice of... God, I mean, that man, that man... You can have the title. Lord Chief Justice... Okay, there you go. <laughs> of great... He fits the... He seems to fit the bill. Uh, and I feel like a little mouse under an elephant's foot. Come on, Mr. Narahoda. Don't be a mouse. Uh, uh. It is an honor to meet you, Lord Chief Justice, Strongheart. I'm Ryunosuke Narahodo from the Empire of Japan. Well, Mr. Narahodo. Welcome to London, the capital of our glorious Great British Empire. Uh, uh, yes, thank you. Huh. Examine. Okay. For some reason, I went to examine and I thought I can examine him. You know? Well, listen. I made it a personal goal to armband. What? Inherited from Cosma is identification wears as a defensive lawyer throughout. Uh, I don't have my badge no more. Oh, I'm not going to show him this. <laughs> I'm not going to show him that. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, London. So, what are your impressions of our capital so far? How do you like London? Oh, uh, well, uh, hell, I've been so nervous ever since I got here, I can't remember a single thing about the city. It's simply splendid, isn't it, Mr. Narahodo? Oh? We had a wonderful view of some of London's streets from the carriage on the way here to the station. Everything is so impressive and grand. I must say, I'm almost lost for words. I'm glad to hear you like it. The city boasts tra- uh, trampways? Okay, the city boasts trampways, pipe- I can't even fucking read, Jesus. Piped waters and gas, even capable- even cable supply- even cable supplying electricity. Fuck! I can't read. <laughs> Alright, we spearheaded every revolutionary new technology in the world. Every visitor in London is astounded. Oh yes, astounded is the word. Thanks for saving me there, Sasato. And everyone seems so joyful and full of vigor. Yes. There's much ex excitement about the upcoming Great Exhibition we will be hosting here in London. Great Exhibition? 
God, where'd you get that cane? Cultural, uh, culturally, oh uh, God, I can't even speak. Cultural and techno technological advancements from around the globe are to exhibit here in our great city. It will be the greatest spectacle of its kind in history, and will make Paris's World Fair look like a toy shop. Fuck those guys in Paris. Gosh. <laughs> Gosh, really? That's where you go, Sasada? <laughs> Gee, golly. <laughs> I can hardly imagine how magnificent it's gonna be. Great Britain's capital city is nothing but magnificent. London is the center of the modern world. Even if you do say so yourself. The sun will never set on our great empire. <laughs> say that. Say that to America. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oof. Damn it. Our great empire. Yeah, okay. Perhaps it's the face that this... <laughs> God damn it. Perhaps it's the fate that this is uh, progressive times. We welcome visitors from the land of the rising sun. Alright. Law student. Um, Lord Chief Justice. I think you were expecting a student of law for the study tour, weren't you? Absolutely. A Mr. Kazuma Sogi, if my memory serves. That's right. The British government has already been telegraphed a full report on the situation. I understand the young man's lost his life aboard the steamship bound for our shores. That's amazing. The news reached him before we even arrived. My country naturally extends its deepest condolences to yours. Oh, thank you. And you're honored this appointment specifically to inform me of the news. Yes. We are here in the capacity of envoys from Japan to report the sad news in person. They tell me you Japanese are people of protocol and courtesy, and I see that is true. It is with some regret that I must inform you that the death of the young lawyer means the study tour arrangement can no longer proceed. If you would just hear us out, Lord Strongheart. Oh damn, you're stepping up to him, Sasato. <laughs> oh man, this is all you, Sasato. <laughs> what do you have in mind, madam? It's about the study tour. Mr. Naruharu here would like to make a proposal. Oh, and then you pass the ball to me. Oh. Would you now? Well, Mr. Naruharu. This is it then. The moment of truth. The thing is, Lord Justice. Lord Strongheart. I was wondering if perhaps you would consider allowing the study tour to go on ahead. Don't misunderstand me. Britain would ideally like to see the tour go ahead. But without a lawyer from your country, there's nothing to be done. Well, in that case, what if there was someone else? Another lawyer from Japan, I mean. Is there something I don't know? Um, only a single lawyer was invited to Great Britain from our country. And that was Mr. Asogi. At least, that is what I have been led to understand. Well, the thing is, this really isn't going well. I just can't seem to find the right words. Mr. Narahuda. I could ruin things here if I'm not careful. There's someone else from Japan who would be described as a lawyer. Actually, there's no one. <laughs> it's me. It's me. I can do it. Is that so? I mean, I don't actually have any qualifications as such, but... No qualifications, you say? And yet you still claim to be a lawyer. I... I have acted as a lawyer in court before. Only once, as it happens. And I had Cosmos to help me. And I was the... I was the accused! Jesus! But glossing over the details. 
I've been spending every spare moment on the journey here to Great Britain studying. I've learned all about British law and court proceedings while I was aboard the SS Bureau. The voyage from Japan is some 50 days, I believe. Not what you might call a full education. To become a qualified lawyer here in Britain, not only do you need a university degree in law, you must also complete several years of training. I realize it's far too short a period of time. But I can't just go back to Japan. Kazuma, Mr. Osogi's journey had only just begun. Coming here on this study tour was all he thought about. I have to carry on and do anything. Do anything? Do everything he planned to do. I know it must sound like I have an overly inflated opinion of myself. But I would do anything to prove that I have what it takes. Any test you care to set me. Just one chance. That's all I'm asking for. Please. Hmm. 31 seconds. Sorry? Your opening statement there, Mr. Narahodo. It was 31 seconds long. Not too brief. Not too... Pro not too protracted. A perfectly judged appeal, I would say. Which is a skill that would stand you in good stead of... What? Which is a... <laughs> which is a skill that would stand you in a good stead as a lawyer. Good stead? Steed? Stead? Why'd I say stead? Is it steed? Steed. It's steed. That's how I, I literally just talked myself into that. Jesus, fuck. Oh, thanks. So, you're willing to put those words to trial, are you? Well, I am all for entertainment. Huh? But let me ask you one thing first, sir. Yes. You say you intend to do everything Mr. Sogi planned to do. Are you firmly set on that path? Well, yes. That is my intention. I see. Am I imagining things? Or did his expression just alter a fraction there all of a sudden? Very well. You had your wish. I'll give you a chance. A test to become a spec. Fuck, I can't even read. A test to become a specially certified lawyer. Whether you pass or fail is entirely up to you. Really? Fuck yeah, what's the test? So, what form will this test exactly? Damn it. What form will this test take exactly? Tell me, Mr. Naruto, though, what do you consider the role of the lawyer to be? Well, defending people, of course. Well said. So, let's have you defend someone. Huh? Your timing is perfect, in fact. There's an app trial about to begin later today. Today? Oh, God. No advocate has been appointed for the defense as of yet. So this will be welcome. This will be welcome news. T today? Straight away? If you manage to secure a verdict of not guilty, you'll have passed my test. What kind of game are you playing here, Lord Chief Justice? What if the guy is actually guilty? What if he is actually mur- What if I set a murderer on your streets? God damn it. What well, could be simpler? How do I get myself into these situations? Well, can I ask what sort of trial this is, Lord Strongheart? Mm, yes. Good question. I remember. It's a murder trial. Aw, oh, fuck. I'm gonna set a murder on your streets. Oh, no. A murder? Moita, yes, you heard me. An, ex an extremely simple case, I understand. You really can't lose. That's easy to say. But I should mention, just in case, if the defendant is found guilty, he will of course be sentenced to capital punishment. Which is death? Yep, okay. Here in Great Britain, murderers are sent to the gallows, with exceptions. Oh, without exceptions, my bad. <laughs> 
Presumably, you read that much in your short sea-based intro introduction to British law. We can't possibly agree to such a test. You would be toying with the man's life. I am the Lord Chief Justice. I have decided it's acceptable. Oh, shit. But you can't do that, can you? There's no need to overcomplicate this. All you have to do is ensure that you don't lose. So the defendant may live or die, depending on how well I perform in court. If I lose, he'll be hanged. Mr. Narahodo, you've come to me claiming to be a lawyer. If you want me to take you seriously, you need to prove you're willing to do a lawyer, to do a lawyer's job. And you say you intend to see through the will of your compatriot, Mr. Asogi. I would like to understand just how far you were willing to go in order to make this happen. He's testing my resolve. What's the matter? You've fallen silent. I'm sorry, but time is pressing. The trial begins shortly. I need, any, I need an answer from you now. What is it to be? What do I say? Do I agree to this absurd test? I'll do it. Alright then. If I have to give you a decision now, my answer is... I can't do it! I can't get the words out. 15 seconds. Your decision making needs work if you want to be a lawyer. That's That was too slow. So, is I, is that, uh, fuck, I can't read. Is it as I suspected, isn't it? Sorry? You have noble intentions, but lack the resolve to see them through. The test is canceled. Thank you for stopping by. Go and acquire your ticket for passage back to the east tomorrow. This conversation is over. Yes. Lord Strongheart. Thank you for offering me a chance. Mr. Narahodo. I'm sorry, Mr. Sato. But what could I do? It's alright. I understand. You do? It's not an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances. But resolve has absolutely nothing to do with it. What are you trying to say, madam? I think what Miss Sasato means is that no matter how badly I like to recon be recognized as a lawyer and stay here in Great Britain, to risk another man's life by treating his by treating his one and only chance at a trial so trivial would be utterly unforgivable, and I feel exactly the same way. I'm sure the defendant won't see this trial as a test. As some kind of experiment. A lawyer may fight for his clients in court day after day. But for each one of those clients, the peculiar day they stand in the docks may be the only chance they have to fight to prove their innocence. No, I was wrong. I'm not qualified to do this job yet. I'm sorry for wasting your precious time, Lord Chief Justice. Wait, Mr. Narahodo. Was there something else? It's approximately 20 minutes by carriage to the Old Bailey from here. If you leave immediately, you should still be there in time. But I just said that... I was quite serious in what I told you. The defendant in this case has literally no one to advocate for him. What? At this point, he can't hope to find someone to represent him. The trial will begin without a defense. And if that happens, 
there's only one possible outcome. He defends himself. You he he received the most severe sentence the judge can pass down. But that's awful. But that is the truth. Why does it have to be like this? Why I gotta be like this sometimes? Well, it do indeed seem to be like that sometimes. <laughs> but don't expect an answer to every question. The cold hard truth of the matter is that he's fucking guilty. That there's only one person now with the chance to save this man from a very miserable end. And that is you. Really his only hope? So, what do you say now, madam? Me? What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? You said it wasn't an easy decision to choose whether to defend a man in these circumstances, and I agree. But in my estimation, it is purely and simply a matter of resolve. Oh. Our time is up here. I have a meeting to attend. I must leave in two minutes and 16 seconds. So, venture into our great city and enjoy yourselves. Well, that was fucked. He's gone. The old Bailey. Oh, we're so fucked. If we're gonna do this, Mr. Nadahoda, we must leave at once. Alright. Well, let's get a move on, damn it. Who the hell are we defending? 18th of February, 9.45 a.m. Oh my god, that is early in the morning. Actually, no, he's not really that early now that I think about it. <laughs> I guess seven would be? Hmm. Oh, thank goodness. We're in time. Still 15 minutes until the trial begins. I never knew a horse-drawn carriage could go so fast. But my teeth were going to rattle loose. Did you hear what I said? So the driver... Wait, what? To the driver we climbed aboard... I can't even fucking read! What's wrong with me? Did you hear what I said to the driver when we climbed aboard? Get us to our destination in five minutes, driver. And there's a git and there's a gin what? A, a guinea in for you? What the fuck are you talking about? It's one of my favorite lines from Herlock Shlom stories. And it worked quite perfectly. I'm not sure why you're so pleased. Thought we were gonna die. We had to pay gold for the privilege. Well, at least we arrived here before the trial started. Yeah, I suppose there's that. Anyways, I don't understand. The court clerk said the defendant should be here. But there's no sign of him at all. So, this is the old Bailey. Even this room for defendants... Uh, what? Even this room for defendants to wait is grand. Are you alright, Mr. Narahodo? I'm feeling tense, and that's all. This place gives me the same se sense of foreboding that I remember in the Supreme Court in Japan. An oppressive air, almost as if building itself is gonna crush whoever is about to be sentenced. It was like only yesterday that I had the one, that I was the one about to be crushed. Yes, whoever the man you you are to defend, I imagine he's feeling very alone at this moment. Top of the morning to you, madam. Sir. Oh, you look evil. <laughs> oh, no. We're fucked. What are you doing? F what? What are you doing following me here? Things are fair. God, Jesus. Things are fair desperate, are they? Sorry? Would you look at those expressionless faces from the east? Are you? Uh, we're from Japan, yes. Ah, oh, Japan, is it? Right. Say no more. So, how much do you need? 
No, we're just here because... No need to explain, fellas. I've been there myself, so I have. No place to go, nothing to eat, barely a penny to your name. And all while in a strange faraway land. Well, actually, we haven't found a place to stay yet. No. Tis grand, tis grand. Let me start by giving you a thousand gu guineas? What the fuck? Am I saying that right? <laughs> I see that word and I think guinea pig. Is it guinea? Is it really guinea? I'm gonna fucking lose my mind. Say nothing now. A, a thousand guineas? Please, Mrs. Otto. You don't have to shout. But a thousand. It's enough to build an entire mansion in the most prestigious area of Tokyo. What? Does nothing to me at all. I like to ensure I have sufficient funds to weather a rainy day, you see. I have enough wealth to buy the city of London two or three times over. Could that much rain even fall in one day? Well, even so, we couldn't possibly accept such a large sum of money. Uh, he hit me in the eye! Don't get me wrong, fellas. I'm not giving it to you, no strings attached. I'll be wanting you to do something for me. Oh? To be honest, just a little embarrassing. The trial that's about to begin, you see, is for my good self here. I'll be in the dock. So now, what I want you to do is come along with me and stand there beside me. Officially, you be my lawyer, but that's just a little detail now. Uh, well, the thing is... Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> about a thing. <laughs> All you have to do is stand up next to me, nothing more. Otherwise, you see, this trial is going to start without me having any kind of representation at all. So it was true. The Lord Chief Justice wasn't just making it all up. Um, I'm terribly sorry to have asked, but does that mean you're the defendant in this trial? Blastering blazes! Do you use what? What? Bl blister what? <laughs> Do you not know who I am? Me? One of London's biggest names? No, sorry. I've only just arrived in the city, you see. Hmm, I see. I suppose it isn't, al it isn't altogether impossible. Well, just next to Hyde Park. Hyde? Yeah, Hyde. Hyde Park, in the center of London, is another beautiful park. Sorry, a park? What? Tis called McGilded Park, full of blossoming flowers in the spring and singing birds and whatnot. I donated it to the city, so I did. An entire park in central London. A city of smiles. That's my visions for London. There's nothing Magnus McGild. What the fuck, McGilded? Wouldn't do for the city, and it, and it's. I'm not saying that word. I'm not even gonna attempt to say that word. And it's old people. That's amazing. I mean, really extraordinary. Ah, but now they the gall to say I've good for nothing criminal. Me, Magnus McGilded. What is the matter with the London police? I ask of you. Mm. All right. Don't pass out. Mr. Narahodo. Perhaps now would be a good time to introduce ourselves while the gentleman catches his breath. Good idea. Um, Mr. McGilded, the thing is, we're actually here in London to study British law. We're law students on a, st on a study from Japan, you see. So, if you don't have a lawyer for your trial yet, and you'd be happy to put yourself in our hands... What was I... Wait, what? Fuck. What was I after saying, you daft idiot? What? What was I after saying? Am I having a stroke? 
I've given you a thousand guineas to stand up there next to me, haven't I? Well, yes, but I wasn't really offering to stand up next to you. Oh, I think I see what's going on here. Sorry? I know what you're thinking. What you're thinking. This chance, this chancer of a fella claims to have more money than the queen. But if that's true, why the blazes can he hire the finest lawyer of all of England? Yeah, I have been thinking that, actually. Maybe it's just your character, or maybe you don't know how to shut up. I don't know. Or maybe there's something bigger to it. Maybe you are guilty. Because he did it! That's the only explanation. Well? Uh, well... Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. What now? Well, like you said, if you have all the money but you don't have anyone to represent you in a court, there's no other logical conclusion than that you're guilty of the charges. What? It's the truth! Well, you call a spade a spade in the East, so you do. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean any offense. I still can't express myself very well in English, you see. And I'm never sure what's acceptable to say and what isn't so. Is that so? Because you sounded fluent enough when you were telling me what a... What a... What a blackguard I must be, Jesus. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Alright. I can't say that I blame you for thinking that. It is a little strange, to be honest. Damn, I love how everyone was shocked. They were like, what? You can't say that. It's like, but, but it's the fucking truth. What do you want me to say? <laughs> why, do you, why don't you have a lawyer, I mean? That would be the fault of the Reaper. Oh, no. Sorry? Did he just say Reaper? I, the Grim Reaper of the Bailey, Lord Barak von Z Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Von Karma's ancestor, huh? He's the prosecutor. The prosecutor is the Grim Reaper? When Von Zykes stands for the prosecution, they call his they call the accused his sacrificial lambs. And to this day, in every single trial in which he's been the prosecutor, the accused has been damned. What? So it reach and reaches the, the separate situation. Where there's no one willing to stand in defense against the fella at all. You could say he's a living legend of the old Bailey. Goodness. Lord Baron Von Zykes. Or as my dude Shaggy would say, Lord Baron Von Zoinks. That was a shitty joke, don't laugh at that, that was terrible. If you laugh at that, you're a terrible person. <laughs> oh damn, I laughed. I'm terrible. You must be an exceptionally talented prosecutor, then. Talented isn't the word you're looking for, madam. Oh, so he's a sleazeball. It's cursed. Cursed? What on earth? The defendant is summoned, and his counsel. Please make your way into the courtroom. The trial is about to begin. His counsel? That would be me. Oh, tis time. Well then, fellas, don't let me down. But... But I don't know anything about the case. You haven't told me what happened. Until you showered your face here. Oh, showered. Did I just say shower? Fuck! Until you showed your face here, I made up my mind, so I had. Sorry? I decided that I have to defend myself in there. How would that have worked out? But then you made an appearance. A student of law, what did you know? Just no incident. I can assure you of that. It is fate. So don't get cold feet now, please. Ah, oh, shit. 
What did you do? Well, what didn't you do? What are you involved in? I literally know nothing about this case, or about this man who stands accused. In fact, the only thing I do know is that I'm fucked, and I can't turn my back on him. Mr. Narahuda? Listen, Mikoto, but we've been around each other for a while. Can you just call me Ryanosuke? Fuck, it'll be easier. The man has no the man has no one. He'll have to stand alone in that courtroom, armed with nothing to defend himself. Yes. Something that Cosmo would never have allowed to happen. Counsel for the defense, what are you doing? If you're late for the start of the trial, you'll lose your stand your right to stand. Get the fuck out of here. I'll be right there. It's happening, then. My first trial in British court. I hope you're watching over me, Kazuma. Because I have no idea how I'm going to manage this. Oh, you guys are fucked. <laughs> Chief Lord Justice fucked me over. February, 10 a.m., the Old Bailey Courtroom. Ah, oh, Jesus. So, this is the highest court in Great Britain, the Old Bailey. The centuries of history in this place is plausible. God, palatable. I was gonna say plausible. Palatable, isn't it? So different to the Supreme Court in Japan. It feels both imposing and serene at the same time. The atmosphere almost makes words redundant. Whatever the country, determining a person's guilt or innocence is always a solemn affair. May I say something, Mr. Narahodo? Yes, what? I'm shitting myself? <laughs> yeah, look at him. Your eyes look ready to pop out of your head again. I know, but I just can't help it. Oh my god, Santa Claus. You're the Supreme Judge? In the name of Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. We are here today to determine the guilt or innocence of Mr. Magnus McGilded. I now call upon the counsel for the prosecution and defendants to declare their willingness to proceed. Oh my god, I fucking... Uh, Jesus. Man just sitting there posing it up like he's fucking Alucard. Jesus, fuck. I have to drink my water. My, my throat is getting a little hoarse. The prosecution is fully prepared. That must be the Reaper of the Bailey. He really does look fully prepared to dispatch his next poor victim to the underworld. Counsel for the defense? You appear to be Eastern. Do you speak English? Uh-huh. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. But he asked if the defense was ready. And I couldn't be farther from ready if I tried. Oh my god, this man is so goddamn beautiful. <laughs> Jesus. I can't stand up to that. Uh, I'm not even gonna attempt to, like, give a guy some sort of voice or whatever. Those eyes place me. Nipponese? Nipponese, really? They shroud, you, they shroud your fear, your doubt, your trepidation. They run wild clinging to some phantom notion of courage. The quiet, the quintess, what? The quintessential, oh fuck, I can't read. The quintessential look of a sacrificial lamb. Ugh, a cold shiver just ran down my spine, all the way to the tip of my toes. Now, Mr. McGilded. Yes, my lord. You stand accused of murder of Moida. 
A capital offense. You could be sent to the gallows if found guilty. Are you quite sure you wish to entrust your defense to this foreigner? Fucking racist ass Santa Claus. I have always said, my lord, tis a grand thing to have opportunities to the young. Even if this fella is a student from some little island off in the Far East. Why, why are we getting dunked on constantly out here? Jesus. Even in our own country, the fucking one British lady, she's all like, man, you guys are trash. And everyone's like, yes, we are. Is it not the British way to ignore the dangers to yourself and give those less fortunate a chance? I like to thank this act of chivalry to do the great British Empire proud. Listen to Mr. McGilded, what a fine gentleman London has in him. Did you hear that he donated 5,000 pounds to the government? Mother, please, may we go play in the what? In the McGilded Park? It seems as though everyone in the public gallery is firmly behind Mr. McGilded. That's definitely welcoming news. He certainly has a way with words. I'm surprised you couldn't convince anyone to defend him. Eloquently put, Mr. McGilded, in most laudable se laudable? Yeah, laudable sentiments. Now. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm sure I need hardly remind you. That you six members of the public have been selected for your impartially for your impartiality. Are you ready to proceed? We got fucking grandma putting over there, knitting it up. And that guy, that guy's the murderer. That guy, the guy playing with the fucking knife? He's the murderer. Yes, my lord. If the task is to send routers to the gallo, where they belong, I'm more than ready. At the manor, his lordship always says, we should dispose of rubbish promptly. Naturally, I agree. Ha! Huh. Any criminal here would soon be wishing they'd never set eyes on me. You guys let him have a fucking knife? He's drinking in court. Really? That guy's gonna... That guy's gonna be part of the judging procedure? Come on, man, he's drinking! <laughs> really? Come on! I feel a chill. Yeah, maybe that's fucking your, your blood getting fucked up. Oh, don't mind me, my dears. I just be getting on with my knitting. Must finish these mitts for my grandson. It's very cold out. Gotta warm up his little fingies. <laughs> oh, Mr. Naruhodo, these people are... The jury, yes. That's something we don't have in Japan yet. That's right. I've only ever read about it. But here in Great Britain, the court's final verdict depends on the opinions of these six jurors. The judge passes sentence according to the law, but the jurors determine guilt based on common sense. So, the defendant is ultimately judged from two completely different points of view. How exactly do the jurors give their verdict? That I don't know, but... I'm sure it will become clear as the trial pro progresses. Yes. Prosecutor Von Zykes. My lord. It's been a number of years since we've seen you here in the courtroom. I thought you renounced your fame. I'm known as the Reaper of the Bailey, my lord. Infamy rather than fame, I would say. But yes. Five years have passed since I last spread my wings in this capacity. So, what brings you back? If there's some change of circumstances of which the court should be aware. There we go. There's that fucking bow. I leave that to your imagination, my lord. So... If, listen, I think I know what happened. He's like, listen, I try to make love to my sweetheart. I couldn't get it up. And the only cure I have is to go back in court and send people to the gallows. I got a fucking court boner, okay? So the Reaper has been out of action for five years. Uh, 
Why did they have to choose today of all days to make a comeback? Don't lose heart, Mr. Nanohoto. As you wish, sir. The court never, nevertheless welcomed your return. Now then, opening statements, I think. A summary of the case, if you please. Certainly, my lord. As your lordship is aware, this is the case of overwhelmingly sim simplicity. I'm having like a fucking hiccup, Jesus Christ. <coughs> I gotta like clear my throat. As your lordship is aware, this is a case of overwhelming simplicity. We must be the only ones in here who aren't aware. Oh my god, this man pulled out a fucking scroll. The incident took place in the late evening. Three days passed, the hour was some minutes after ten. The victim was a maker of... Aww, they sketched the picture. That's beautiful. Was a maker of building bricks known in the community as Tres... Uh, what? Tres Fired? Tres Fired? Tres Fired? Fired. Yeah. Manson! Sorry? Trace? Trace? He was a very accomplished craftsman. The bricks he fired were said to be almost indestructible. Was he killed with a brick? Oh no, he was stabbed, man. He was stabbed in the carriage. Okay. The victim's corpse were discovered in an in a omnibus in service of the streets of London at the time. A dagger that had been thrusted into the victim's abdomen is believed to be the ultimate cause of death. Here's the autopsy report from the investigation's medical officer at Scotland Yard. Thank you, counsel. I shall accept that and the photograph has evidence. All right. Look at this photograph. And one further item of evidence. The prosecution wished to submit these as well. And these are... Good Lord! Is that blood, counsel? Yes, my lord. Seized by the policemen who arrived at the scene. These gore-soaked gloves were taken from the hands of the accused when he was arrested. Oh no, O.J. Simpson, oh god. <laughs> Jesus. Mr. McGilded Gloves has blood on them. Maybe if we, maybe if we put some rubber gloves over his hand and make him wear gloves on top of that, Fucking, we'll see if they fit. Fucking O.J. Simpson trial. Jesus, fuck. That man's guilty. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, I'll accept this as evidence as well. You guy's a fucking murderer. How did I get into this? I'm backed into a quarter before I even started. Continuing. According to the driver of the omnibus... There was only two passengers traveling inside the vehicle at that time. Okay, that's very, very, very fucking suspicious. Only two? Obviously, one of those passengers was the deceased brickmaker, Mr. Mason. The other... was the accused, Magnus McGilded. I love it, he's like, Ugh. victim seems to be stabbed by a knife, as the fucking guy in the goddamn, <laughs> in the goddamn jersey is just twirling around with a knife, he's like, hmm, a knife, you say, mm, yes, very peculiar. Well, rather demanding circumstances, to say the least. Defendant, what do you say? I say I've been fucking shut up, Jesus, fuck, can I look at this shit? Let me see, alright. <clears throat> Mr. Mason, male, 54, occupation brickmaker, time and cause of death, 15th February, 10, well, okay, 10 to 11, wait, what, okay, between the hour, stab once in abdomen with a knife, whilst journeying in an omnibus, died due to internal hemorrhaging resulting from the trauma, so, was an instant, okay, that's what I can make from that, let's see what we're looking at here, Man has some rough ass, you know, clothes on. Which. I don't know. This. This might be important here. There's. A, yeah, that is important. A button's missing. Okay, so he's missing a button. 
All right, so that's something I think we should look into. Is there anything to really see here? No? Anything on your, on your face? Did somebody leave like a little kiss mark on your cheek? Hmm. That's the only thing I can see here, really. Nothing else sticks out to me. Besides the missing button. And the gloves. Well, let me see. Taking on Omnibus knife and his abdomen clearly visible, but his face is is partly obscured from view by an old crooked hat. Hmm. Partly obscured, yes. Probably has something to do with it, but you know. Uh, leather gloves the defendant was wearing at the time of the incident. There's blood stain. Okay. Let's see. Oh? The hell is that? It's like a a little bit of different coloration here might not be nothing right yeah it's probably nothing hmm okay all right defendant what do you say well of course I have no recollection of such things mr. McGilded to be sure I rode the omnibus that evening but whenever I am in carriage, I take in with a fierce tiredness, and I always succumb to that. Are you claiming to have been asleep? Test the motion of the carriage, my lord. Linting. Linting? Linting, so it is. And when I open my eyes again, it was a desperate sight before me. The body of a man I've never laid eyes on before in my life. Hmm. Now I ask you, what good heated soul, heated? Did I just say heated? What the fuck is wrong with me? What good hearted soul would it rush to help a fellow bleeding from his stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about my gloves now, was I? I reached out to give the man a hand. So, the blood got on the gloves then after the man had been killed. Unfortunately, that statement of the driver is only the beginning. What? There were multiple witnesses to the precise moment at which the brickmaker was fatally stabbed. That lady started fucking typing. Order! 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 When the killing took place, only the victim and the accused were inside the carriage. And there were witnesses and there were witnesses to the crime. This is not just a case of compelling evidence. It's the nail in the coffin for the accused. Hmm. Thank you, counsel. The circumstances of the crime have been made quite clear. I think we will hear the testimony for these witnesses, first of all. Your wish is my command. Bailiff! Bring the witness at once. Ah, oh, shit. Witnesses, your names and occupations. My name is Will. Everyone call- wait, what? My name is- oh, fuck. My name is Will. Everyone calls me... Beepo? I drive an omnibus in the, in the East End. Bruce Fairplay. I'm a banker of the city. My name is F F Froust? First? Froust? Froust. Froust. Froust Lady Froust. What? <laughs> Froust. Lady Froust. Okay. I, um, I make hats. Okay. Let's begin by confirming this fact. Three days ago, at a short time, at the 10 o'clock in the evening, all of you presented, wait, all of you presented, all of you present in the stand were in an omnibus and witnessed the aforementioned incident. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Quite right. Yes, sir. That's right, sir. I don't know, I'm looking at Lady Froust over there and, uh, or Faust, however the fuck you're supposed to say that. Froust? 
It's probably Frost. Lady Frost. And um, one thing sticks out is his hat. It seems like he possibly could have been the guy that made the hat for the Brickmaker. So it might have some, you know, some connections there. Very well then, let's proceed with your for with your formal testimonies, please. Each of you will tell the court precisely what you saw. Okay, what did you see? Witness testimony. It was the last bus of the evening, so I had a few customers. I remember it well. The victim and the man accused of killing him were sat next to each other inside the bus. Then out of the blue, the accused just reached over and plunged a knife into his guts. That's right. He stabbed him. I screamed, I did. Oh, I screamed, I did. Very loudly. Couldn't help it. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus. And then I saw it too. Oh my god, he has a fucking whip. Oh, of course he has a whip. He's a, he, he whips the horses, yeah. Hmm. Unambiguous testimony, I may say. Exactly, my lord. These men witnessed the incident in the omnibus with their own eyes. I was fucking, I was speaking in the middle of a yawn. Jesus, fuck. <laughs> Alright, so, my first question here is, you guys say there were only two people in the omnibus at the time. So how the fuck did they see this? Were, what, were they just, were they just walking beside it or something? Like, were, were they in the omnibus? I, how the fuck did they see it? I need to know the circumstances of that. Is the omnibus like super slow? Because I don't think it is. Right? The omnibus is the little cart on the cable, right? You know, the trolley. <laughs> so, uh, you know. And I would also assume that their vision might be obscured because they don't really get to see the inside. Hmm. I'd like to ask a question if I may. Yes, counsel. Well, this testimony makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Why not? Well, the incident took place inside a moving carriage, did it not? As has been clearly stated from the outset, yes. Well, in that case, how could these two witnesses possibly... Uh, those two witnesses? Oh yeah, the other two. The banker and the hat maker. How could the witnesses possibly have been, possibly have seen what happened? There's no way they could have seen the inside of the moving carriage. Why are you all silent? How quaint. What am I missing here? I read the civil, uh, civilizations in the Eastern uh, Islands nation was a good century behind our own. But you're here in London yourself. Are you really so ignorant about the omnibuses? Hmm? Tell me, my knee punny's friend. Have you even traveled in an omnibus? No? Well, I only arrived in London this morning. No matter. I've arranged for us all to see for ourselves the actual scene of the crime, that is. What? Do you mean... the actual scene? How? A carriage is designed to be moved, after all. Presumably, you understand that much. Uh, yeah? The omnibus in which the bloody crime took place is here today. Very... in this very... oh god, really? Here? What? The... the entire carriage? <laughs> Bailiff? Bring forth the stricken omnibus. Okay, yeah. I mean, there's windows, but they're still like... You still wouldn't really get a clear view from the inside. I mean, from the outside. So this is an omnibus. The omnibus. Unless they were sitting at the top, which I doubt... I can't believe they could bring something so enormous in here. Great Britain's courtrooms are amazing. As you can see, the omnibus is pulled by two horses and can carry up to eight passengers. 
Four passengers seated inside in this enclosed cabin, and another four on top. Every Londoner knows that the best view of the city architecture and sites are to be had from the top of the omnibus. Yes. And I should point out that our foreign guest, uh, to our foreign guest, oh, there's a window inside. Jesus fuck. Wait. Okay. All right. But you said there were only two people on the omnibus. That's what you said by your words. So you lied. Okay, there's a skylight in the roof, allowing the view from the interior from the seats above. A skylight. Oh. The penny dropped at last, I see. These two gentlemen were occupying the rooftop seats of the omnibus when the murder took place. That is how they came to witness the grim incident. Through the skylight. That makes perfect sense. Well, Council, this is the f this is a first. In all my years behind the bench, I never experienced the crime scene itself being brought into the courtroom. There's a number of important clues remaining inside the carriage, my lord. I would like to submit the omnibus itself as evidence. This guy is pulling some goddamn strings. That is the prosecution's wish. What you say, Santa Claus? Very well. I see no reason why not. This omnibus is hereby formally accepted as evidence. God damn it, you gotta be kidding me. I can't believe it. The entire crime scene entered as an evidence? That's a first. I would like to have a look at this. Phoenix right on the bus. <laughs> okay, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, lo Job Masters London's head office. London head ass. <laughs> London Fifth Avenue Job Master. Okay. And that's what it says all around. Is Can I open it and go inside? I would really like to. Well, let's open the door and go inside, shall we? Uh, the scene of the murder? It's horrible. Fuck you, I need to see. Okay. Hmm. Huh. The sea has a handle, it seems. Okay. This looks like all sorts of equipment might be needed to keep the omnibus running. Feeding tubes, tools for repair. So, it's a storage compartment. Doesn't seem to be any space for passengers to stow their luggage, that's for sure. Well, I don't imagine it would be very convenient for that purpose anyways. Hmm. There's nothing on this side. Blood that soaked into the seat. The verdict's observation. The victim's, uh, obviously. Yes. And the seat would be clearly visible from the roof deck. Would you really stab someone in full view of other passengers like that? Well, it was after dark. And there was a lamp on in here, so perhaps the culprit couldn't see anything outside through the skylight. Hmm. Whichever way you look at it, it doesn't seem like it was planned attacked. Quite a large skylight, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite large enough to afford a good view into the cabin from the roof. And there doesn't appear to be a handle or, or a catch of any description. So I suppose it can't be opened from the inside. Can't be opened from the inside. So open from the outside only. Hmm. I wonder... Can't find anything out of place. Oh, my bad. I pressed the wrong button. Oops. Can I look at the top again? You can certainly see inside the carriage through the opening. That's for sure. Yes, and there's a lamp in the enclosed cabin. So, I'm sure the witness would have been able to see quite clearly. Not good enough for us. Hmm. Okay. 
I see all I've wanted to see for now. Yes. Great Britain is simply extraordinary. I could help myself a lot by giving the Omnibus a thorough examination. Let us continue with proceedings, then. Your cross-examination, Council? Hmm. Pray don't expect this Nippon straight to understand the, intri the intricacies of a British court cross-examination right? Asshole. Alright, my first cross-examination in British court. Focus, Ryanosuke. Focus. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> All right. All right. Last bus of the evening, so I had a few customers. Remember it well. The victim and the man accused of killing him were sat next to each other inside the bus. Then out of the blue, the accused just reached over and plunged a knife right into his guts. That's right, he stabbed him. I screamed, I did. Couldn't help it. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus, and then I saw it too. Hmm. Can you give me a little bit more detail? You actually saw the exact moment it happened. What? Oh yeah, okay, yeah, this is to uh, react when someone's like losing their shit. Didn't I already testify to that? Or our fair, our fair dinkum, dinkum? Hardworking city bankers not considered trustworthy these days. <laughs> Since when are they considered trustworthy? What the fuck? Oh, no, no. I didn't mean that. Hmm. This is not good. I really got his back up. Perhaps you can just tell us what you saw in a little more detail if that's... My lord! Hmm? Juror number three? What's the meaning of this? My mind is made up, my lord. Completely and utterly made up. For I know what knives are. <laughs> and I know how one can stab another man. As you can obviously tell. Made up about what? I don't like the stinking rich. Never have. So you're biased. They're always up to something or others that should... What? There was up to something, or others that they shouldn't be? They're always up to something, or other that they shouldn't be. Okay, whatever. <laughs> That's weird way of wording. Every one of them. And that little, that little leperinch, le leperinch, le lepr whatever. Of a man is no exception. Well, he can't fool me. What the fuck? Oh my god, just like that? This point, wasting time listening to any more of this. That's my opinion of the matter, anyways. This is precisely what what I was about to say. What the fuck? As the foreman of the juror, it's my duty to set a good example to my fellow jurors. So we got a bunch of biased ass people here in the jury. Okay, what the hell's happening here? Let me see. Ah, uh, yes, it seems that how the members of the jury give their verdicts. With fire? Apparently, yes. White for innocent and black for guilty. As the six members of the jury make up their minds about the case, one by one they each cast a ball of fire into the great scales of justice, as we saw a moment ago. So if those enormous scales fall completely in the black side, does that mean... Mm. Let's do our very best to make sure that doesn't happen. Ah, oh, shit. Now I'm even more worried. So can they resent their claims? Or once you cast that fire, it's it. Very well. The court acknowledges the change in the jury's st stance. Counsel for the defense, please continue with your cross-examination. Oh my god. Oh my god. You're in the jury. You're supposed to be unbiased. You son of a bitches. Plot my downfall. Okay. J just like that. Out of the blue. 
The victim and the man accused of killing him were sat next to each other inside the bus. Hmm. Sat next to each other, not across? Hold it! And you saw them through the skylight in the roof of the carriage. That's right. When you sat up the top deck, the windows went right, right there at your feet. Let me see. Pursue history core. Okay, I just want to see. I want to see my options on that. Hmm. There was a lamp on the inside, so I had a pretty good view. So set next to each other. The two of them were wearing hats, and I couldn't exactly make out their faces. But there's not a shroud of doubt in my mind that it was Mr. McGill. How can you be so sure? Well, how can I put it politely? McGilded is a gentleman of rather small stature. You couldn't have mistaken him for anyone else. Yeah, but when you're sitting, you don't really... It really doesn't... You know, unless you get a clear view of the person, it doesn't really tell you their height. You know, unless his fucking feet wasn't touching the floor. He has a pretty big hat, too. Let's not forget, when the vehicle came to the halt, the only people inside the enclosed cabin... With the deceased Mr. Mason and Mr. McGilded. There's no room for doubt here. Uh, I really wish there was. Okay. So your statement. Hmm. Last bus of the evening had a few com uh, customers. You remember it well. Hold it! Might as well. Why not? Yes. I think it was some time after 10, wasn't it? Oh, yes. That's right, sir. It was freezing. I gotta make sure to look over at you, because I can't see you in view right now. Yeah, four passengers on board at the time, is that correct? Yes, that's right, sir. All traveling in the same parts of the bus, of course. Wait, what? Not all traveling in the same part of the bus. Okay. And there were no other passengers when the incident took place. No one alighted, for example. You're quite right of that, sir. No other passengers. Okay. So nobody fled the scene of the crime, then. I have to say, the boss insisted on it running. He does. Every evening. In the last bus of the day. Hmm. But I do wonder sometimes if it's altogether worthwhile. Yes, sorry to say. I'm not sure if they're gonna give me like a little a little signal up here of them like, you know, on their little person icon thing, if they're reacting, so I'm constantly looking over, I don't really remember. What do you mean by that? Well, with it being cold and everything and only making 20 pence on the run, you see. Yes, I spend that much at the pub on the way home, just trying to warm up again. Hmm. Okay. Hold it! You stabbed him, you say. And you were sitting on top of the roof deck, were you? Yes, that's right, sir. I was on top... I was on the seat. On top... Whatever, fuck. <laughs> I remember seeing the little gent sitting next to the fellow that was stabbed. Uh, I've been thinking about a new hat design, you see. So I was just gazing absentmindedly around. But then, it, I happened to look down through the skylight. It was it was straight. What the fuck? I can't. See. It was sticking right out of his belly, a huge great knife. Hmm. Grim sight indeed. That didn't help me at all. Jury looks like they're even more convinced my client did did it than they were before. Your staff made everyone even more dubious that Mr. Gilded... Dubious? Yeah. Yeah, dubious. That most of uh, Mr. Gilded is telling the truth. Well, isn't telling the truth. If only he had evidence counter their claim. Counter their suspicions, my bad. Mr. Frost. Frost. Ah, yes, sir. Is this the knife you saw? Oh, good grief. Yes, that is. Good grief, sir. Is that it? Yes, Counsel. This is the blade that was driven into the victim's belly like a stake through the heart. 
That is the blade of considerable size, Council. It is. And furthermore, the scabbard is embezzled promptly with a certain initial. The letter M, which seems oddly familiar. Mm, please no. M, for Magnus perhaps, or McGilded possibly. Take your pick. Maybe, maybe M stands for Mr. Stabby. It's the name of the knife. <laughs> it seems this peculiar big name in London made a magnificent mistake. Oh, God. But, but there are M's everywhere. Like, like, yeah. Like in Mason. This blade is far too extravagant for a poor brickmaker to have owned. Who says that he doesn't know how to make blades? He knows how to make bricks that are indestructible. I would assume he knows how to make a blade. No. This weapon of murder almost certainly belongs to the accused. Nah, shit. I mean, there's also a banker here, right? Hmm. Not conclusive, but certainly compelling, counsel. Large knife that was found launched in the victim's abdomen is quite... It's quality and fancy ornament, ornament, ornamentation. Fuck. Suggests it must be quite valuable. My lord, if you'll forgive me for interrupting. Jury number two, go on. Mr. McGilded is pillar of society and a gentleman, and a gentleman's word should be scar- uh, scar- I can't even fucking, what the hell? However, God damn it, girl. Those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. Wait. What are you about to do? Dispose of the rubbish. Mm. I think Nana Putin's my only friend here on the jury. I don't wish to cause offense, but I do like to ex to eradicate all traces of filth and grime. Oh, come on. I have painstakingly typed every word uttered here today and cross-reference all the facts. As such, I am now in a position to draw the only logical conclusion. You guys are assholes, you know that? Not again. That's four out of six jury members who proposed the guilty verdict. There are only two left. We've had it. Every time I press these witnesses for more information, it just makes the situation worse. Nevertheless, what we need more than anything at this moment is more information. We're still very much in the dark. I suppose I just have to keep pressing the witnesses, knowing that more sparks may fly. We mustn't give up hope. We'll uncover something that will give us a way to fight back. But... Alright. I'll keep trying. I can't give up. Nana Puddin, you're my only friend here. I just need to keep calm and listen to the witness statements again. Well, there's only one left. Oh, my bad. I didn't mean that. Shit. That was the last statement. I thought that was the first one. All right. So when it happened, only two people were enclosed in the cabin. The victim defendant. And so help me. Three whole people witnessed the man <laughs> trying to defend... Uh, trying to defend do the deed. I don't like to be pessimistic, but we don't seem to be in rather diff we do seem to be rather in a difficult situation here. Yep. What am I supposed to think here? Is Mr. McGilded really innocent? How oh, could it be? Before we jump to conclusion, our first half should be gather information. God, I had to yawn. We need to understand the case much better than we do at this moment. Absolutely right. Let's listen to those witnesses' statements again. One more carefully this time. Yeah, that was my plan. I just didn't mean to, like, no, skip it. Fair play. That's right, he stabbed them, and then this was the only one that I didn't press. As soon as I heard the scream, I stopped my bus, and then I saw it too. Hmm. What exactly did you see? Oh, well, sir. Would be passenger, sir. Yes, collapsed on the floor. He was. And by, excuse me, <laughs> collapsed on the floor. Okay. And by the passenger, obviously you're referring to the victim, Mr. Mason, the brakemaker. 
And then the other passenger had the knife in his hand like this. He was like, I'm gonna fucking stab you. Well, the other passenger, obviously, you're referring to the accused, Mr. Magnus McKilden. And then he plunged it down like this, stabbing the other passenger in the belly. What? Makes no sense. My lord, I wish to speak. Yes? Juror number five? Do I take it you too? As the master of London's guild of coachmen. The idea of the murder being- Oh my fucking god, everyone here is biased. Oh. Oh. Fuck. It'll be right to make a decision before hearing the facts, though I say to myself- Well, it wouldn't be right, my bad. But I've heard enough now. The horse has bolted, as they say. No, please, just keep an open mind a little. Giddy up now, Silver Blaze. The finish is in sight. Nana Putin, you're my best friend, I love you. Beepo is a long-standing member of the guild, and I trust what the man says. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, man. This is too unkind, sir. Which now means five jurors agreed to condemn this man. Nana? Keep, keep fucking knitting. Madam Juror number six. Yes, Terry. <laughs> Fuck. What can I do for you? You have heard the testimonies of the witness in the stand. Oh, yes. I certainly have. Still got my hearing, you know. Then, pray tell. Why are you yet to pronounce your leaning? Well, dear. The thing is, I'm... I'm a creature of habit, me. I always go to the park at around this time of day and sit on a nice bench and get on with my knitting. There's a lovely little park just near where I live. Me gilded park, it's called. The gentleman donated it to the city, you know. To put a smile on Londoners' face, he said. I can't imagine such a fine young gentleman would have and him to take another man's life. He's always doing wonderful things for the city. That's right. A man like that wouldn't stab someone, surely. Mother, may we go to Gilded, Park li uh, Gilded Public Library later and borrow some more books? How many Londoners live with their heads in the clouds, do you people not know? What kind of a man Magnus McGilded really is? What kind of a man he is? The philanthr uh, philanthropist, McGill uh, McGilded, whatever, fuck, damn it, <laughs> has enough wealth to purchase the entire city he claims to value so highly. But where did he get all this wealth from? Your client is a Shylark, sir. You're one with the very darkest of souls. What? Stoned the crows? Hush your tongue, Glant, fucking grandma. McGilded lends money to extraordinary... Uh, to uh, fuck, he lends money at extraordinary rates of interest, so his victims have no hope of repaying him. When, uh, when they default, he takes possession of everything they own. He is a vulture that preys on the weak. I've never heard any mention of that before. Your faculties haven't deserted. Uh, fuck, fuck, I can't read. <laughs> haven't deserted you too. I'm sure, madam. So, has this thought not crossed your mind? Would a man wealthy enough to buy London in entirety not have a carriage of his own? What possible reason could this man have to make use of public omnibus service? Well, if he loves London as he says, he's, you know, he contributed to the economy. Hmm. You're not saying that. The victim, a poor brickmaker, had next to nothing to his name save considerable financial liability. It will come to no surprise that his creditor was the accused Magnus McGilded. But let it be also known that, they, that the very day Mr. Mason was killed, the 
was the final repayment date of his debts. Good gracious. Oh, shit. The Burgrainter was destitute. He had lost his house. He had nothing, not a shilling, with which to repay his debts. And in the end, this pitiful soul had the very last thing he owned taken from him. His life. By the merciless philanthropist pretender, Miss, uh, fucking Magnus Gilded. I don't believe it. If I may add something briefly, Mrs. Sato. You claim that the victim had been lent money by Mr. McGilded. But where's the evidence to support your claim? Where the fuck did you get that? <laughs> like, I was looking at it, and in my mind, I was like, was that there before? But no, it wasn't. It just came out of nowhere. He manifested wine. Pray forgive the discourtesy of filling my hollow chalice in the court of law. Ha! Huh. There is it. Lord of Lord Von Weich's hollow chalice. Oh no, not the fabled hollow chalice. Jesus fuck, help me. How can this be considered acceptable? I don't know, one of the fucking jury members has a fucking flask in his hand, so I, I don't know what to tell you. The other one's playing with a knife, you know? Fucking... But I find myself in unexpectedly good humor. I had heard ladies from the Far East could show great courage, but I didn't expect to experience it myself. Are you telling her to get back in the kitchen? I'll beat your ass. I'll hop over this fucking courtroom right now. As a judicial assistant to the defense, I'm simply doing my job. What a pity that your display of courage is in vain. And this is the debt collector's ledger, which details all, all, uh, all monies, monies, really? That's how we're spelling that? Okay. All monies loaned by the accused. You will find the victim's name clearly recorded inside. Ah, oh, shit. Allow me to present this ledger as evidence. And pray forgive the discourtesy of raising my chalice in a toast to the to the Amatic East at the same time. A marvelous toast, Council. I will gladly accept this new evidence. We're so fucked. Ah yes, twenty guineas. The victim owed a considerable sum, and the accused made quite certain that he's ample rec uh, recompense. Nana Putin, Nana, don't you do it. Well, it would seem I have. I've had the wool pulled over my eyes. Forgettably, madam, that is the modus oper mundus? That is the modus operandi of the accused. And it's such a pretty little park, too. What a scoundrel. Nana Putin, you, you better fucking stop. You better stop this. Still. Maybe it's all for the best. Uh, wait a minute. Let's think about this little... I don't stand for nonsense. Don't you... Oh my fucking god. That was it. The last year's decision. Is it final? Sasato, please don't tell me it's final. Ah, according to this encyclopedia of British law, when all members of the jury have concluded the defendant is guilty, court proceedings are suspended, and the presiding judge will deliver the final verdict and sentence. That's what it says here. The final verdict. It's over then. Oh. There's a footnote, though. A footnote. However, the defense... Stop. <laughs> Stop. Let me get a... Come on. <laughs> Let me get a moment here. All six members of the jury are now in agreement in this case. Sato, tell me what you were going to say. Allow me to convey my respects for you, Swift, and right, for your Swift and righteous decision. According to the laws of this country, I will now conclude the trial. By delivering my final verdict, I trust there's no objections. 
Mr. Sato, just tell me one thing. Oh, yes. You were in the middle of saying something before? The footnote in your encyclopedia of British law. However, the defense? What did it say next? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, one moment. When all members of the jury have concluded that the defense is guilty, court proceedings are suspended and the proceeding judge will deliver the final verdict and sentence. Then the footnote says, however, the defense has the right to demand a, sum a summization. Fuck. Summization. Is that how you say that fucking word? Summization exp exp fuck exp damn it explanation of the jurors at this point what the fucking fucking tongue twisting bullshit so a summary summization explanation Objection. what the fuck ah uh, someone's it can we stop saying these words please <laughs> From which country, from which century has that tome you have there been resurrected? Huh? Judging from the binding, I would say the book is at least 50 years old. Any modern text of British law wouldn't even give such a, such an antique procedure a mention. It's a relic, long forgotten, and certainly no longer practiced. So, you're out of luck. I don't know if it's still... Listen, I don't care if it's out of practice. If it's still fucking valid, we're doing it. I'd like to request one. What even is it, Mrs. Sato? This so-called some nation. Now, uh... One moment. I'll read about it. You would demand the right to the procedure before you even understand... What the fuck? I'm having a hard time reading. You would demand the right to a procedure before you even understand what it entails. Mm, typical Nipponese. You're racist. <laughs> Alright, Mr. Narhoda, I think I understand. It seems under the procedures we would be able to appeal to the members of the jury. To do what exactly? Appeal to them to change their leaning and reserve their decisions. Not reserve, my bad. Reverse their decisions. And it says here that... If successful, the proceedings of the trial must be resumed. Make them reverse their decisions. Yes. In times gone by, uh, barristers would use the summation exempt fuck to attempt to influence the jury's decision. But the procedures began something of a formality with no practical benefit, really. So it rather fell out of use. I wonder why. Because it was devoid of purpose. Changing just one member of the jury's mind would be hard enough let alone several. No self-respecting defense, Barrister. Barrister. Barrister would even assert his right to try in this day and age. So it so people just gave up because they're because they suck. Alright, I got it. Still I don't see any mention of the procedure actually being formally revoked. What are you suggesting? That we fucking do it. I'm suggesting that although it may be antiqued and largely forgotten, it isn't yet extinct. Hmm. What do you think, Mr. Narahoto? It's our only shot, so yeah, I would like to. Hmm. Our last possible option. Do we assert our right to carry it out? Fuck yeah! Why wouldn't I? I'm going home to Japan regardless. The defense wishes to assert the right of the some nation ex- Fuck. London is the capital city of the most powerful nation on Earth. <laughs> Until America happened. <laughs> That's so fucked up. Alright, we have a duty to the world to exemplify the very high standards of judicial proceedings. Uh, this shit is an embarrassment. It should be remained buried. And it wasn't buried yet. I think you got your- I think you got your ideas messed up, my buddy. Objection. But it's our right. It's our right. I believe it could prove vital in this trial. The defense petition is perfectly valid. The court will proceed with the summation exmit. This is madness. Foreman, are you and the remainder of the jury ready? 
Well, uh, I'm not. Mm. There was no mention of this in the letter I received, you see. All members of the jury will be asked to explain on what grounds they have reached their decision. Yeah, <laughs> fucking half of you guys are biased as shit. The other guy fucking owns the company. On what grounds? You must all justify your decision and explain why you believe the defendant to be guilty. Well, my lord, you're rather putting this, putting us in the spot. This is most irregular. No mention of, of no mention of what's made before. I don't recall. Hold. Wait, what? I don't recall. What the fuck am I saying? I don't really hold with all this justifying, Lark. That seems to have thrown the jurors off. Seems none of them have experienced this before. All right then. The summonation X Men F F. Oh, damn it. A defense procedure and not practicing what? No practicing lawyer has attempted for years. You know, remember, remember when I had, remember when I explained that there's a moment in a stream where I begin to sunset. <laughs> I call it sunsetting, in which I lose all comprehensive ability. <laughs> That's happening right now. I'm having a hard time here. Well, just maybe. It might be the opportunity we've been looking for. Turn this trial around. So be it then. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the court hereby calls upon you. To state the grounds on which you find the defendant, Magnus McGuilty, guilty of this most serious crime. Alright. <clears throat> Judicial findings. There was no one else inside the carriage at the time. So, what the fuck are you doing with... Okay. So it has to have been him. I trust the driver. He has an excellent memory, it seems, for passengers. With, <laughs> his memory was fucked, though. Uh, with fares totaling 20 pence. He stuck the... He's literally... He's doing jabbing motions. Come on, man. This guy's evil. He stuck the trap next to him like this. Brazen, I must say. Absolutely brazen. I simply typed in... And collate, collated, collated, okay. All the statements thus far and draw the logical conclusion. You can trust the guild. Fair's fair. Uh, what? Fair's fair, what? I'm having a stroke. Fair's fair is our motto. We haven't raised prices above four pences for years. The scoundrel stabbing the poor man on the floor. It, beg it beggars belief. Wow, half of you guys are, like, fucking wrong. I'm starting to wish I hadn't pushed for this now. Some of the jurors don't seem to have wonderful formed arguments, though, do they? Well? I mean, like, four of them are like, Yeah, he stabbed him like this. No, he stabbed him like this. No, man, trust me, I know how to use a knife. I'm playing with one right now. He stabbed him like this. I have to throw everything I can at them and use some very persuasive language. All right, just a moment, Mr. Narahoda. According to my book, that's not quite how it works. Huh? I thought I was going to have to thwart their icy minds. Thwart? Thaw their icy minds with some heartwarming rhetoric. Rhetoric? Whatever. About the defense. Unfortunately. Once the jurors have decided the defense is guilty, they're unlikely to heed anything the defense says. But, they reach their conclusions by their own reasonings, you see. Your pleads will sound like excuses. In fact, it could recoil on you. The more you try to persuade them, the more entranced they may become. Then what on earth am I supposed to do? Oh dear. I'm just citing what I've read about British law, Mr. Nadahoda. Right, I'm sorry. You got any idea how, this, how to make this work then? Well, from what I can understand. The key to this procedure is using the jury's own words to make your arguments. What do you mean? Well, the six members of the juries are randomly selecting members of the public. They, they may appear to present a united front, but the truth is, they are complete strangers who just happen to find themselves here in the courtroom together. And... That's the way to break, uh, what? <laughs> and that's the way to break them down, you mean? 
Yes, exactly. You must listen very carefully to what each member of the jury says. And see if we can identify any contradictory statements. If we can, then contrast to the statements and pit... Wait, what? I'm having a fucking... I'm, I'm losing my mind. If we can, we then contrast the statements and pit the corresponding jurors against each other. I see. So, it's contradictions in what two or more jurors say that we're looking for. In a way, then. This is similar to a regular cross-examination. Oh, well, yeah, I suppose you're right. Find contradictions in their statements and pit the juries against one another to break them down. All right. Might be able to pull this off. No, that's not right. I have to pull this off. Can we start proceedings, counsel? I would ask you to take the stand for this. I'm accepting what? I'm expecting a clear and consent, consent, God, concise rebuttal. Yes, my lord. All right. Let's see if I got this. All right. No one else inside. You can also press their statements, really? Hmm. I trust the driver. Excellent memory, it seems, for passengers. Okay, well, I already see one, right? There's our motto. Haven't raised the price four pences for a year. Fair total, 20 pences. What? <laughs> That's not right. Am I losing my mind here? Except four passengers, right? It's not 20 pences, it'll be, it'll be 16. I might be losing my mind here. Hold up, give me a second. No, not 16. Yeah, wait. What? <laughs> Fuck. I can, uh, four, eight... 4, 8, 12, 16, that's how it goes, right? 4 times 4 is 16. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 16. Yeah, fucking what? Yeah. Objection. Those two statements clearly contradict each other. They do? Explain yourself, counsel. Me? Oh dear, what have I said? I swear on Silver Blaze's main name... What? <laughs> I haven't the first idea of what you're talking about. According to the group testimony we've heard so far, there are four passengers on the omnibus of the night in question. And according to the coachman, Mr. Beepo, he took 20 pences and fares. Quite right. I have those precise details typed neatly here in front of me. And jury number five also taught us the following. The fare of the omnibus is always four pence. That is it. A fair and convenient single price, just the way London carriages should be operated. But that doesn't add up at all. In fact, this leaves a glaring discrimination in the facts. Discrepancy. I said discrimination. I don't know why I said that. Discrepancy. Why, man? Why? Four passengers paying four pinch total. And if you do the multiplication. Huh. It'll be 16. Yeah. Exactly. As I said, it doesn't add up. Figures are different. By four pence, in fact. Or precisely, one person's fare. One person's fare. Yes. In other words, on the omnibus that night, it's distinctly possible there was another passenger we've heard nothing about. Fucking got him. I just hit my microphone. I don't give a damn. This can't be right. The coachmen of the guild... The guild are good, honest men. One and all, trustworthy. Ah, the figures you coachman claims most certainly do not add up. Your watchword, good sir, is a fallacy. I beg your pardon. Mr. Gilmaster, I think you ought to consider this uh, if the trial were to end. The news will surely spread over London. 
the news that one of your coachmen tried to hide the fact that he lets nefarious characters ride his omnibuses. All right then, how do I make it so this miserable trial doesn't end? Well, according to my book here, you simply launch a ball of fire into the innocent side. Now hold your horses, coachman. We were all in agreement. Why do you have to go and... Wait till I get my hands on you, Beepo. <laughs> oh, shit. That was a threat. Fuck yeah. Ah, uh, this is all very irritating. Begging your pardon, sir. I'm going to do the same. Fuck yeah! For the love of Mike! Not you as well. A penny can be the difference between a smile and a tear, after all. I certainly can't put my trust into someone who doesn't follow my... my exacting standards in financial matters. Oh, really? I, for one, think it's only proper that we hear from the witness again. Well done, Mr. Nanahoto. You did it. If we can manage to change two more jury's minds, we can force the trial to continue. Two more. Exactly. There's something else that's bothering me about the couple of, about the couple of their assertions. Then, that's where you must strike next. So I need to pit two more jurors against each other. I fucking love this. <laughs> I love this ability. It's great. Well, the scales of justice have shifted, but they still weigh heavy on the other side of guilt. Counsel, you have the floor again. Continue with your, with your summonation examination. God. I'm changing my lean in innocent. Thank you. All right, what do you got? Inside the carriage at the time? So it wouldn't have been him. Stuck the chap next to him like this. He went, I got him. Yeah. Nana Puddin? I don't want to give you a heart attack, Nana. But Nana Puddin and this guy, Attention. McStabby. These two statements are completely contradictory. What? Explain, counsel. Post haste. Oh, dearie me. I was only knitting a jumper from my other half. What's all this claptrap? I'm not playing Borderlands. What does contradictory even mean, I ask you? We heard from more than one witness that they allegedly saw the actual moment when the defendant stabbed the victim. Now, out of curiosity, do you remember number three? What? Can't you see that I'm busy here? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim? What sort of motion was it? Want me to test? Want to test me, do you? It was like this. Stuck the fellow next to him without even getting up. Just like the prim banker said. Yes. That was Mr. Fairplay's testimony. Quite true. Now then, juror number six. Nana Putin. Oh. Is that me, is it? <laughs> what can I do for you, young man? How would you say the defendant stabbed the victim, madam? Oh, well, dear, as far as I understand it, it was like this. He stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. The coachman said so. Now don't move. Take a look at these two jurors. He stuck the fellow next to him without getting up. And he stabbed the poor man after he collapsed on the floor. Well, I've never. There. They're stabbings. In totally different directions. What? Bless my stitches. What a muddle. What this tells us is that there's a strong possibility one of the witnesses isn't telling the truth. Oh. But why? Why the dickens would they lie? I don't know that yet. But what I do know is that if the trial ends at this point, we may never find out. We may never know the real truth. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, can you really let that happen in all good conscience? Lies, you say? Oh, dearie me. I 
I can't abide people telling lies. Yeah, Nana Putin. You tell him. The scales. I don't believe it. Wait. Now hear this, my fellow jurors. I warned you, you cannot listen to this man. Look at him in his black suit. He's clearly some devious Eastern sorcerer using magic on us all. If I can use magic, do you really think I'd be putting myself through all this? Answer me this, Dark Jinx. Huh? Me? What exactly is the problem? What if it... What if two witnesses have slightly different recollections of the events? What of it? Let's say... The Shylock did stab the victim, where he sat next to him on the omnibus. And this young dandy saw him do it. And now let's say the victim collapsed on the floor, and then the Shylock stabbed him again. And the old lady saw him do it. Well... What to say it didn't happen like that? Who are you calling a dandy, sir? Why I should take this knife to you. Who are you calling old... <laughs> Why I should take this needle to you? Oh, shit. They're ready to kill each other now. But, could the foreman of the jury be right? Does the two witnesses see two different motions of the same crime? That's out of question. One fatal wound. Unfortunately, Mr. Foreman. Hmm? What is it, you dark jinx? Come on, out with it. What you're suggesting is impossible. It's out of the question. What? What are you talking about, man? Have you poss- How can you possibly say that? You do realize that I'm- I'm only doing my job. As foreman of the jury, I have a responsibility to steer everyone in the right direction. So, where's your evidence, man? <laughs> That's what you want to say. That's what I want to see. I say the two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime. If you say that one's out of the question, show me proof. Alright. Looks like the only way I'm going to convince him is to present him with some, uh, with something he can't dismiss. Some irrefutable hard evidence, as you wish. What? I'll give you the proof. It's out of the question that the two witnesses saw two different moments of the same crime, as proven by the photo, right? It can either be the photo or the autopsy, given the cause of death. See. Port, Scarlet Yard Corner, given the cause of death, and internal hemorrhages resulting in a single stab wound from the abdomen. Take that! This is the victim's autopsy report. According to what's written here, Mr. Mason was stabbed in the abdomen. Only once. Only once. It's quite simple. The victim was stabbed precisely on time. On time? Did I just say, oh, my bad. One time. <laughs> Which means these witnesses can't possibly have seen it happen two different times. All right. I concede defeat. Hell yeah. Wait, then that means four jurors are now leaning to not guilty. You done it, Mr. Nanahoda. We've won. What are you playing at, you dandy fool? Shut your trap, sir. No one deceives me. But we've come to a consensus. I said such a trap. I know a liar when I see one. And if the chap over there dared across the threshold of my shop, I'll take this razor sharp blade and oh god, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> razor sharp blade and shave every last hair off his head. Please tell me he's a barber. Well, in quite a remarkable turn of events, the defense some <laughs> This examination, exploit, exploit, examination has flipped the balance of the scales of justice. The jurors now stand at two for guilty and four for not guilty. 
Accordingly, there was no longer a large amount majority amongst the jury for me to adjudicate. And the trial must continue. The defense would like to call for a recess, please. <laughs> kind of tired. I hereby ask the defense, prosecution, and witnesses to return to their places. And I call upon all of you to continue to pursue the truth. So, Lord Von Zykes, continue to substantiate the case for the prosecution, if you please. You're not even going to drink it, you're just going to smell it, you asshole. Ah, shit. Having savored the rich aroma of the curamine contents of this hollow chalice. It may seem crash, crash, my bad. It may be, seem crash to crush it to dust. Pray forgive the discourtesy. Lord Von Sykes. It's cold in here, or is it just me? As your, an as your antique tome no doubt says, the prosecution may not speak during a sum summonation, oh God, summonation, exam fuck. summonation examination. So I honored a deadly silence and listened to the charade. It seems I overestimated the intelligence of the jury. Well, no matter. There is nothing so hard to prove as self Evident truth. Ev wow, it's ev evident. God, the words. Evident truth, it would seem. No. And why else would we grace the courtroom with our presence after all? So, let us proceed to the next round of battle. Jesus, fuck. Bring forth the witness once more. Witnesses, I trust you heard the summonation examination we have just had to endure. Oh, yes, sir. I did. Of course I've heard it. Oh, yes, sir. I heard it. You, sir? On the end. The coachman, I believe. It's Beepo. Yes, they call me Beepo. <laughs> My lord, sir. If it transpire wait what? If it transpires that in your previous statement testimony, you were exempting to veil the, pr the fuck. You were exempting to fuck. I can't read. You were exempting to veil the presence of five of a fifth passenger on your omnibus. You will be found guilty of perjury. Perjury. You are advised to bear that in mind, sir. Uh, oh, mio dear, dear. I also deal. Now then, witness, I hereby call, I hereby call on you to testify before the courtroom again. You will explain the various misgivings brought to our attention by the defense summonation examination. I only carried four passengers that night. I swear it. But, uh, well. Everyone was told I had to pay five pence for the bus. He fiddled us, uh, fiddled us on the fair, he did. And then I saw that blood curling sight as well. It's all too much. I tell you, I saw McGilt stab that man. Everything I said before stands. Ah, oh, yes. He stabbed the man, he did. I think so, yes. Counsel? Make sense of this for me, please. The phantom fit passenger con uh, conjured into existence by my learned eastern friend and never existed. The confusion has arisen from the coachman's sly little consonate. Fuck, what's fucking good? Embezzlement. <laughs> I don't fucking care. Not really embezzlement, is it? Mm, kind of. Beepo, explain yourself. I'm terribly sorry, sir. 
the guild fare is four pence across the board. You know that. Am I to understand that you've been overcharging your passengers by a penny a fare? It's so cold, and the last run of the day is always half empty. You have been dishonest, coachman. I'm sorry. You're a disgrace, Beepo. A disgrace! As your selfish actions have brought dishonor on the entire guild. If I may, sir. I had to pay tenpen uh, tenpence on the bus just last week. What? Four passengers at five pence each is, yeah, 20 pences. I've done the arithmetic ten times Oh Wait, what? I've done the arithmetic ten times already. But I just can't make the result outcome any different. No, that figures. Well, it would appear to be one of the aforementioned misgivings has already been explained. So, Council of Defense, a cross-examination, if you please. We've already had the pleasure of protracting some uh, summination, uh, fuck, summation examination today. I see you intend to continue the parlor games. Absolutely. Jesus, fuck. Oh, Ace Attorney, you never failed to, uh, to make these trials last pretty goddamn long. <laughs> All right. Well, sadly, I was, I was hoping to get a, uh, you know, after the examination we did, I was hoping to get a, um, a, uh, whatchamacallit, a recess, you know, but I guess, uh, that's not going to work. <laughs> I guess that's not what we're dealing with right now, so... Uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to call it an end for today. You know, we were coming up on time, so made a lot of progress. I would say we finished the second, we finished the second chapter, which you know isn't isn't that crazy, right? It's not that crazy. I mean, that was gonna happen regardless. We've gotten a, a fair bit into uh, the third chapter, right? I had to yawn. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to yawn. I've been holding that in for a while, you know. Um, I'm at a point where I'm starting to slowly lose my mind. <laughs> I can't read no more, and my throat is killing me. This is what happens when when I don't stream Phoenix Wright for like two weeks, right? My my uh my vocal cords don't get used to it. Anyways, that's gonna be it for today's stream. Um. You know, if I have time, I will, you know, stream again a little bit earlier. Uh, if that happens, I will send notifications through. I'm going to start sending notifications through Twitter, right? Start posting that up. I should do that more. So I'm going to, you know, send send uh, the whole thing through Twitter and the YouTube community tab if I go live, like not on schedule. And next time we come back, uh, we're going to be playing some Persona 4 Golden, right? If we're on schedule, if not, then I'll just tackle a little bit more Phoenix Wright, maybe like an hour or two. Who knows? I can't. I don't. I don't really. I don't really know. <laughs> right. Um. But yeah, that's it for today. Uh, later. I keep hitting my fucking the cord for my mic. I keep hitting that shit. Damn it. I gotta move it out of my way. Um. What we call it for the YouTube channel? Uh, I haven't been able to upload anything at all this week. But later today, I'm definitely going to be uploading uh, another part for the Nightmare Before Christmas thing. That that playthrough is pretty much done, right? I just have to edit and upload it, really. And then, of course, the same thing with Vampire the Masquerade and fucking, uh, what, what's the other one? Uh, of course, Party Blood Drive. Gotta do that. Gotta upload that. So that's going to be on the channel. Um, fucking, I think I said this earlier. If not, um, let me let me uh put it out there again. Uh, you know, put a little put a little poll out there at some point where I was like, if I'm gonna do a marathon, what what should I do, right? And Pokemon was the winner. Uh, I'm still I still I'm still planning on doing that Pokemon marathon, but it's gonna take a little bit more time to actually get started than what I 
what I originally thought because I am uh, I'm looking into some things so you know there's that and then uh yeah that's pretty much it for me um pretty much it for the channel and stuff <laughs> and for twitch yeah so for those who came and watched live today thank you very much I greatly appreciate it I hope to see you next time right and if you if you're not followed think about it right um for those watching this on YouTube when this goes up come and view it on Twitch because you know you get to see the playthrough earlier you don't get to see the playthrough until it's completely done and that can be months from now so you know and Lord knows I'm not I'm not quick on the draw when it comes to the uploads right so um so yeah <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube I hope you enjoyed it if you're not subscribed please consider it if you are subscribed, make sure you click the bell, get notifications when an upload get, uh, goes up and stuff like that. And if you do like what you see, please click the like button. It helps out. It lets YouTube know that we're doing something good. And, uh, you know, it, it recommends it to more people, right? Share with your friends. Tell them to watch my shit. <laughs> but that's it for me, right, for today. So, you know, keep an eye on the Twitters. For when the next stream goes up and yeah that's it so once again I want to say thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video stay happy oh shit my switch is falling asleep stay happy stay healthy and take care